<clears throat> the last time we left our heroes, if you can even call them that, they finally made it to the end of a long journey to the heart of Druskenwald, a land trapped between dusk to midnight under the gaze of a witch's moon. For this chapter, we began not too long before, but certainly far away. Across the whole valley, in fact, to the very edge of this domain of dread. It's here where a lone man stands before a wall of mist. He's waiting for something, or someone. And he doesn't know it, but he won't be waiting for much longer. Swirling, twisting gloom rises hundreds of feet upwards to the night sky above and stretches outward to either side as far as the eye can see, forming the perpetual borders and confines of the land of Druskenwald. The figure before the endless sheets of gray mist seems tiny, especially in comparison to the gargantuan wicker titan standing motionless in an eternal vigil over a few hundred feet away. However, upon closer inspection, the human man seems to be taller than average, middle-aged with slicked back, black hair, and a pencil-thin mustache. He's impeccably dressed in a suit as gray as the mist before him, his pristinely polished shoes as black as the night sky above. He pulls a ticking pocket watch from his pocket and checks the time with the tap of his foot before returning it and gazing back out into the shroud. Then his eyes meet a light. It's tiny and distant at first, glowing with a spectral blue-green hue but it grows larger and nearer as it slowly illuminates a silhouette that slowly approaches from within the mist. As the figure emerges from the gloom, it's revealed that the light is being cast from a lantern fastened to a hulking orc, slightly hunched as he carries what appears to be a gravestone chained to his back. In one hand, he holds a shovel that he uses as a makeshift walking stick, a hood pulled up over his head only slightly obscuring his face as he simply steps out of the mist. At the sight of the green skin, the dapper man lights up and thrusts his ringed finger outward with a beaming grin. You must be the mi Mistwalker. How do you do, my good man? Lord Philip Druskenwald at your service. I'm glad my invitation made it from one green hand to another. Good show. The man's outstretched hand hovers in the air expectantly as the orc looms over him. Thorgrim, what do you do? Uh, I would reach into my cloak and grab the uh, letter that was delivered to me uh, and I would hand it to him and say, I'm not sure how you got this to me, but I bade follow it. Yeah. He reaches out and he takes the letter from you, a smile alighting across his face. You made the right choice by, ex by accepting my invitation, old sport. You will not regret it. I have just the thing your best gal will want, but everything in its time. I've got some new chums for you to meet, and we'll hash out our new business partnership then. Our carriage waits. Do you need some help checking that slab? Never mind, you seem to be quite attached to it. No pun intended, of course. And besides, I don't think my coachman could lift it. Off we go, good show. <laughs> what a great voice. Well done. Oh my God. Now, sometime later and many miles away from this land's misty borders, a scarecrow, a knight, a pirate, a cultist, and a satyr watch an old black train pick up speed as it chugs faster and faster, a ghastly blue-green smoke leaving the smokestack of the lo locomotive accompanied by the mournful wails of the dead. The amphibian conductor, who you only know as the vagrant, the stranger, or nothing at all, hangs off the side of the engine waving his broad-brimmed hat in farewell as he calls out one last time. Carry on, wayward travelers. You just wait on that platform as patient as the night. He'll fetch you soon enough, and I wouldn't ramble far if I was you. Beware the beast that stalks the woods, and whatever you do, don't let go of your hope. The death of hope is the loss of soul, and trust me, you do not want your souls to be lost here. The ghost light express is swallowed by the gloom as it chugs into the dark forest that, surround, that nearly surrounds you, leaving the five of you on the humble wooden platform along the lonely road at the center of the valley. The fog rolls in thicker by the minute as the hag moon looms overhead. What do you do? <clears throat> so for full context, this is our first time stepping off the train. You have been into... essentially dumped at a platform um, there is a 
old dusty road ahead of you, but it is for all intents and purposes just a simple train station platform, nothing more. Surrounding you behind and all off to the side and in front are dense, dark forests. Leading off to one side is shrouded in mist. And we barely survived. And you barely survived. <laughs> yeah, I'm hurt. Well, I just wrote a song about what just happened. There's an old black train a going, chugging through the fog. I don't know where it's heading, but I'm gonna miss that frog. <laughs> <laughs> he was awfully, he was awfully fa- a friendly fellow. What, what, what did he, did he say? That there's a beast in the woods? Well, he probably meant metaphorically. I believe that it was plural. There's always beasts in the forest. Why do you act surprised? I've been all over the world, and this is nothing like the world. I need you all to roll a perception check. Oh, good. I was just going to ask. <laughs> Suck up. <laughs> I was going to ask if I could scan the horizon. Perception. I rolled it exceptionally well. 23. Perceptionally well. Perceptionally 17. well. I also rolled perceptionally well with a 25. Perceptionally. 15 for me. Mm, 17. So who, who rolled above 15? I did. The oh, four of you, mm. as you as you are looking about and getting acclimated to this new place that you're in, you hear the snap of a twig behind you. Or was that the sound of a breaking branch in the deep breathings of something large, very, very large? I draw my sword and raise my shield as I turn towards it and say, uh, all right, everyone on your guard. I'll see, I told you. He was referring to something specific. Oh, oh he's summoning the cutlass. Is, is that a kitty? Is that a kitty? You you may be right. I, my ears are still ringing from our encounter earlier. Everyone stand behind Briggsy and I. Oh, everybody stand behind <laughs> him, uh, Marius. <laughs> and also stand behind Marius. <laughs> I, I look closer towards where this sound is coming from, and I attempt to uh, see what it might be. Okay, you all turn towards the almost fortress-like wall of trees behind you, so close together, so dark, infused with this mist, that it is difficult for your eyes to pierce in through the trees. I need you to roll another perception check for me, please. Not going to roll this one as well. Yep, that's seven. Eight. <laughs> Looking through, you... <laughs> You feel like you do see movement, but it's much lower to the ground than what you would expect this sound to have come from. And as you listen with your almost supernatural hearing, being a damp ear, you don't hear the breathing or the sound of movement anymore. What is that sound you hear? The sound of steps on wooden stairs immediately behind you. Yeah. I would, I would, I guess, be startled and, and wheel back around away from the original noise. And as you turn around and look, the sound of the steps creak, 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 but nothing there. And as you look down at the wood, you can see as it almost bows under the weight of something, but nothing at all. We must be careful. There are creatures of the night here that I cannot see. Virgil, why don't you go into the fog and check it out? No, I'm not going to go into the fog and check it out. You're like a weird crow. You'll be fine. Oh, fine. You're useless. Well, I'm out of ideas. I think I think maybe did he mean that the beast was going to pick us up? Maybe it's a friendly beast. No, he specifically said to avoid the beast and watch out for it. It was a cautionary tale. Well, I'd yell out at the bowing boards at this point. Um, reveal yourself, creature, or we will reveal you. Or we will reveal you. You call out into the air around you, and you see the mist move against the, the sound of your voice as it billows forth from you. And the creaking stops. Ooh. Well done. Told you. Go on. Say, that seems too easy. I I don't see you do nothing. You're as useless as Virgil. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just a little scared. I think it is standing still. Creature of the night, my name is Lethica. What is your name? 
roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Not very persuasive. <laughs> um, if I can actually get there, uh, that will be in eight. You say this out towards the. There are only five wooden steps that lead from the from the rough road up to the platform that you're on, and you speak out towards the general area, and you are met with nothing but silence. Uh, noticing that nothing changes, I, I would uh, chime in and say, uh, we mean you no harm. We simply mean to defend ourselves. Please, speak for yourself. And as you say this, immediately behind you, you feel a cold breath on your, on your neck. <laughs> do I feel threatened? I mean, I might be I startled. Know, do you? I don't know. That doesn't seem very threatening. I would still jump and turn. I do voodoo gun! <laughs> <laughs> and I shoot in general direction with my uh, arcane focus. Um, I shoot like a flintlock and cast Elder's Blast. I would like you to roll a disadvantage. If you get a natural one, you will hit Marius. No! That's okay. <laughs> Speak for yourself! I'm oh, pretty good! Voodoo gun! <laughs> uh... Alright, uh, that is a 18 to hit. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's pretty good. That's great. And if there were something there for you to hit, you imagine that the blast of your gun would have found its purchase. But there was nothing there to hit to begin with. Benji, stop! That's enough! Well, would, do, do you care for music? I, I, many creatures of, 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 the, of the wood and perhaps of darkness enjoy a good tune or two. Especially fiendish varieties. I got a weird crow here who would, well, he doesn't want to be friends with you. He doesn't want to be friends with nobody, but would, would you like a friend with a weird crow? If you're a weird animal, we got a lot of those here. Jericho, I think it is, uh, whatever this entity is, is perhaps playing some tricks on us. Well, how about we switch to treats instead of tricks? With either or, perhaps we. I prefer. I prefer treats. If you got a bottle of sarsaparilla, I'd like to look at the stairs. Are they still like? No, they're not. Okay. Mm. Does besides the platform and the stairs that we've come down, and there's there's mist around us. It, does there seem to be any other way forward away from the platform, or would it be just directly into the mist? It would, so what's around you is essentially a dark forest. So there's a long winding road like going on either side that it is misty and foggy and more of it has come in since the train left. It's not enough that as you walk, you wouldn't be able to see in front of you. You're not walking into the okay. mist that the train dropped you off in. It's just further into Druskenwald. Okay. But it is further into what appears to be this dense thicketed forest and the vagrant had warned you not to wander lest the beast should get you. Okay, okay. So you imagine you could, and we'll see what happens. Briggsy, please, we need everyone to remain level-headed and cold, all right? Gosh. I, I, I suggest that we move forward together. I would agree with that. I am not going to entertain uh, uh, some mischief or, or tricks, not after what we've already been through. Well, well, well I, I think that, the, the, that our pal, uh, Mr. T. Vagrant, uh, he said this to stay here, didn't he? I, I, I think he said somebody was going to know that we're here, right? Behind you, you begin to hear the swaying and creaking of the boughs of these enormous trees as they begin to move from side to side, clearly with some enormous form moving within, I would say, hundreds of feet behind you. All right. I don't necessarily like venturing out to wherever that is. But how long are we going to stand here? Well, is anyone like a ridden a real train, a real genuine locomotive before? Perhaps it takes a while for, for your, your luggage to get processed? Anybody? I have all I need to carry right here. As do I. Jerrica, what did you do with your things? Virgil, you have... Virgil, you said you were going to give them... 
Well, I got nothing. <laughs> Just what I had in the old bindle, and Virgil must have left him in the pumpkins. <sighs> what I'm gonna say is, if you want to go check it out, go for it. We'll be right here. We'll, we'll, we'll hold down the fort in case somebody comes for us. Oh, Virgil, why don't you why don't you go with Marius if he's gonna venture forth? Is that so? now are you scaredy gonna be a scaredy bird? I don't think it wise that we are to split up at this point. All right, well, I'm gonna do what I was told. Given that there's a fucking horrible face in the moon and there are ghosts laughing and at us. And as you look up, you begin to see large vultures. Six, seven, eight of them circling around you, all in unison, almost as if waiting. Well, Virgil, you want to go and say hello? Maybe, maybe that'll be something we could do. Uh, do, you, do we think that there's that they mean us any harm? Maybe they're picking us up. I think this place is just spooky. All right, they got vultures. They got beasts in the woods. They got ghosts. But we've also learned the hard way that it's very dangerous. That's what I mean, is that if we saw some shit on that train. Is everyone okay, by the way? I think I can maybe sing a little ditty and help somebody out who might be got some wounds still. I was going to pray and ask my dark lady to give me strength, but okay, your no. songs are comforted and I would hear more. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I, I, uh, I, all I, I don't really got a song, I'll just say, I appreciate you, Lethica. I'm going to cast Geeky Healing Word on you. <laughs> Can we consider that a short... Has this been like a short rest period? I would no? say yes. You oh. could consider yourself to having had a short Well, you rest. know what? I said I was going to do it. Lethica, do you really like my songs? They make you feel good? They are acceptable, yes. <laughs> oh, well, that's the nicest thing anyone ever said to me. You hear that, Virgil? I'm of an acceptable quality. Well, no, I, I, you know what? I'm not going to listen to you anymore. I have friends now. Why didn't... Oh, I need to... Let me ask you a question. You have to hit short rest. Oh, damn it. I got to pass it along. Thanks for pointing out. I got a fucking gifted sub again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, continue. Like oh, is there really... Is there really a... Yeah, do, I get, so. do I have song of rest at this point? Uh, probably. At level three, probably. At level three? Well, how does, where, where we're is We're still it? learning our characters. So yeah, we're getting there. So, oh, features and traits. Oh, no, I'm, you know, Lethica, I'm going to sing a song that always cheers me up. <clears throat> now roll. I'm roll. sad <laughs> and I'm lonely. My heart, it could break for my lover loves another. Oh, I wish I were dead. Jeez. I'm sad. I continue like that. That's <laughs> why so I cast, or I use. <laughs> wow. I lean over to Farron. Um, uh, Jericho seems a little sensitive, but I hate this song. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, take an extra D4 from your song of rest. For everybody. Uh, Oh, it's uh, over because you're not there. And I should, or a D6. Well, uh, wait, right? Is it D, yeah, D6? I think it's D6. It's a D6. Just, just want to but clarify. You said that yeah. the I'm song dead. cheers him up. Whatever yours is. Well, that's, that's a second question for you. One, do you really hear that bird talking? And two, why are you such a buzzkill? Well, you know, everyone says it, especially, especially Virgil. Yeah, no, I can hear Virgil. I hear him all the time. I can't not hear him. I've tried quite a bit, actually. He also does not seem to listen to anything that you say. Well, I, I think if I make a persuasive argument, but I've never been very persuasive except for the human folk. To, they find me quite perspe persuasive, perspective, persuasive. You know, I, and, and I, I like to think that, that most folk, well, they don't really like me very much. They usually say, oh no, run away. It's the terrible, terrible uh, mechanical scarecrow. What's gonna steal our souls? You right. hear the sounds of very large legs, some potentially four-legged creature stomp slowly through the woods behind you, hundreds of yards off, but you can hear it. You can hear the snorts and the animal and the bestial noises and sounds 
Occasionally, you feel like you can hear a scream echoing out from the very depths of the forest. All right. Everybody else can hear that, right? Correct, yes. I don't like sitting here when there's the idea that someone out there is being harmed. This place seems very dangerous. Well, maybe it's just this bunch of creepy aminals, a bunch of gross aminals. You know, Virgil, uh, he's a gross aminal. He doesn't mean any, well, I guess he does mean quite a bit of harm. So maybe it all, maybe that gross aminal out there means quite a bit of harm to us. But he hasn't, it, it, it hasn't come to, to harm us. That's right. Perhaps it's just having its dinner. I would be frantically still just scanning to see if I can see anything without wandering away. You are constantly keeping your eyes on the tree line, and at one point you think you see what appears to be two gargantuan, orb-like, blood-red eyes staring out at you. And as you blink and look back, nothing is there. Just the shifting and swaying of the trees. Lathanda, <sighs> help me. I think I'm seeing shades, creatures that aren't there. More tricks. The scream you heard may just be there to lure the sympathetic to their doom. That's right. And that's why we should listen to the frog and we should do as he says. Well, I did like that frog fella quite a bit. He was awful friendly. He said I was special. He said it right here. Is it, uh, this platform, are there anything like, uh, seats or benches or... Yeah, I would say lines? there are three wrought iron benches that you mm -hmm. could sit on, um, spaced the middle and then one on either side. I'll put my pack down on one end and have a seat at the, in the middle of one of the benches. Then perhaps we just wait. Well, I could, I could work on some songs if, if now that I got a bit of an audience. As long okay. as it's not so miserable and depressing. <clears throat> well, you understand? I, well, I mean, that's kind of like half of my repertoire. Well, that's what I'm saying. Use the other half. Oh. Uh, well, I, I got one. I got a song about a, uh, uh, this, this, this one, this one uh, lady. See, and she was madly in love, and she, she had, she married a, a really swell fella, and they had a child, and the child was taken away by a witch. It's got true love in it. And as you have these conversations, you notice that the sounds have stopped; they've dissipated, and the. The noises, the screaming, you haven't heard for minutes, five, ten, fifteen, as you all stand upon this platform and wait. And as the horror shrouded by the fog finally seem to dissipate, you hear a far less threatening sound through the gloom. The echoing of a slow and measured clopping of hooves, accompanied by the sound of the grinding of a wooden axle and wheel. You see a shape in the fog that starts off as a dark smudge on the horizon and then finally takes the proper form of a horse-drawn carriage as it draws nearer and nearer. Two light gray stallions with dark gray mares emerge into the clearing, their eyes entirely shaded by blinders, yet still walking forward confidently. Behind them, they pull a large black carriage that shimmers with polished ebony and silver gilded edges. Emblazoned on several surfaces is an elaborate crest featuring a crescent moon. There's a coachman sitting in the driver's seat, but you see no flesh amidst the heavy coat, red scarf, and crushed top hat. Where a head might be is just an inky void with two round red motes of light peering at you. As quickly as the carriage appeared, it also feels as if moving in slow motion as it pulls up alongside the stairs of the platform. With a, flank, with a faint click, the double doors open to a warm, inviting orange glow. Excuse me, sir. Are you our escort? The head of this entity that is manning this coach turns towards you, but staring into the inky void, all you see are the two red lights. No mouth and no words come from this creature as a it waits. A stranger, a vagrant, sent us, brought us here, told us to wait. Are you a ride? My, my name is Old Jericho Sticks. You could call me Jericho, most folk do. Are we supposed to hop in? Is this, this a ride? Are, we, is this, are those the beasts we have to beware? They don't look very like weird horses, but 
I don't know, maybe they got a dark past. It doesn't appear that we're getting any kind of response. Those horses are the most normal thing we've seen since we got here. I'm gonna go in. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna step down the step down the steps and peek into the carriage and see what I can see. You peek into the carriage and you see a soft warm glow. Well, wish me luck, and I'm gonna step up right into the carriage. Okay. I'm going with Briggsy. I again urge us all to stick together. I, I, well, you you told me to, to stay behind you, so I guess I, I I'm good at following orders. That's about all I'm good at. I jump in. Okay. Does anyone stay on the platform? No, I will uh, silently stand and uh, uh, look at Baron and Jericho. Ladies first, I, I learned that observing peeking into Cotillion. Um, when I look at the orange glow, do I see uh, Marius and, and Brigitte? If you're looking at it from outside of the carriage, no. You just see a warm it's glow. Like a, it's uh, almost so bright that yeah. you can't see what's beyond. Thinking to myself uh, uh, that this may be the second leap of faith I, I have made uh, in recent history, I will silently uh, climb aboard uh, as delicately as I can. When you step inside the carriage, the first thing that hits you is the jazzy brass music that fills the space. But the second thing that hits you is that this space is considerably larger than it appears on the outside, and it's decorated like the finest nightclubs of Galtica. Sitting at the center of a circular sofa arrangement, holding a glass of dark brown spirits is a middle-aged human man. He's impeccably dressed in a gray suit with slicked back hair and pencil-thin mustache. He smiles warmly at you as he crosses his legs and gestures for you all to take a seat. Philip Druskenwald, it's your service, Lord of Druskenwald and the Crescent Court. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. And this glum-looking fellow is Yorgrim. Just Yorgrim, not the most talkative riding companion, no siree. He's the last member of your band of midnight witch hunters. Say hello to our new pals, Yorgrim. Hello. <laughs> With that, the man who introduced himself as Philip raises a glass to the only other person in the, lo- the lounge carriage, a shovel-holding orc with a headstone chained to his person, looking about as dour as you might expect from one with such an aesthetic. Oh, jeez. Uh, take up half this carriage. Um, uh, we are all looking weak. Have a drink. Uh, I, 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 I don't mind if I do. We appreciate your hospitality. Ah. Uh, the name is Samarius. Oh, I know it. You, you, I shouldn't be surprised. He clasps your hand and shakes it. Welcome to Druskenwald. Well, hello, hello. My hello. name is, is old, old Jericho Sticks, and you can call me Jericho. Most folks do it. Uh, Philip, may I call you Philip? Do you prefer Lord Druskenwald? You can call me Philip, friend. Oh, gosh, what an honor. Thank you, sir. And I'll, like, I'll lean down and I'll say, and your name is Yorgrim? It is. Can I call you Yorgrim? It's the only name I have, Scarecrow. Oh, well, thank you, sir. You can call me Scarecrow if you like. It's easier to remember, for sure. So Marius. Uh, Renathy, but Marius is th- fine. Marius, excellent. How, if you don't mind, how did you find yourself here? It's a long story. Probably wouldn't understand. But it's traveling through the dark domains. Like, I assume the rest of you were when a train beckoned past me and a letter flew out. I mean, I, I, I personally don't know anything about a dark domain. I came from Avantress. As did I. Interesting. What? Well, did, did, was there a frog on that train? Was it like a spooky old black ghost train? It was a eerie black train. The letter flew out the window as it That was my past handiwork. Then he nods to you. Your grim, I suspect we all trek through the dark domains in our own way. You may call me Lethica. Lethica? Okay. I'm Farron. The heart's light. Farron. My name is Oh, I introduced myself. Sorry about I just I'm meeting all these new people in one day. I suppose you haven't heard of me. I have not. Well, I'm from... You don't know yet. He's hasn't introduced himself. Ah, Maybe you have. But I have. Briggsy the Cutlass Cratch in your in your presence. Debonair Pirate. Feared on the seas, am I right? 
Usually. Usually. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I mean, we're all from a dark domain, I guess. It was dark when we left. So, I mean, is that kind of the, the, the domain you're talking about? I mean, every domain's dark, I kind of have to time. You're for the night? Yeah. Ooh, is, that, one, is that a joke? Well, it's not really a joke. My point is, is that I don't know what the fuck he means by dark domains. And I'm trying to ask this guy in a kind of pleasant way what the fuck he means. You're very pleasant. Why don't you just speak your mind and ask him outright? What's uh, a dark domain? Whoa. <laughs> You're in are, one. Are you, to, <laughs> are you <laughs> telling me you did not You're travel through the mists to get here? Boy, it was it. It was quite a ride. Well, I mean, yeah, we, we traveled on a train and it, we went through some mist. It wasn't intentional, uh, other than being offered a, or finding a ticket and, and, and redeeming it. You took the train too, presumably. No. The train came past me. I was traveling through the mists between the realms of death. Like, like, like on a train? Or, uh, how, how, how do you do that Just if not on a train? Walking in the lantern light. You can walk through the mist. Yes. The lantern protects me. Now, hold up. I'll display my uh, lantern. That it would, uh, it doesn't burn fire, but it would glow in kind of a uh, eerily like greenish blue uh but it doesn't really produce a light uh and it kind of ever so slightly has like uh like mists kind of like dripping off of it like uh mm. if you were to open the fridge and the cool air would be falling just off the shelf i would uh raise up the glass that that i have taken uh that philip has offered and say well it appears then that you may be the missing piece that we need cheers Oh, quite your glass. Cheers. So, your room. Uh, name's and Bridgie, as you take away. the drink, you <laughs> can enjoy a long rest. Oh. Yes! I am the bravest of <laughs> warriors! Thank you. Wow. So and anyone but, else who drinks and enjoys the well, like, oh, food and hors d'oeuvres <laughs> can enjoy all I, I turn to the side and I'm sipping, uh, hiding my face uh, between, between the uh, sips, uh, but keeping my mask as uh, close to my face as possible. Is that like a, what is that strange, weird, slimy thing in a shell? What, what, is, what is that supposed to be? Is it supposed to be tasty? Yes, quite. It's an escargot, Cherico. Try it, you'll like it. Escar? We were in a train car? I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Virgil loves all sorts of gross bugs. That's delicious. Oh, this is my weird crow, Virgil. He's my worst friend. I point to a really horrific demonic crow on my shoulder. He's like pecking my head. So, I have a question. Uh, so when we saw the mist, uh, they were hor- they could turn into horrible creatures and they could suck your souls out and, and yes, do incredible true. damage. Um, but you can just walk right through totally unharmed because of that lantern me. I travel through the mists and kill the beasts that attack me as I go, but the mists itself do no harm to me. Uh, how do I give me one of them? Well... Know that there are any other lanterns like mine, but I traded one dark master for another to get this lantern. Oh. And if I didn't have to be protected by its light, I wouldn't choose it. Do they sell them to Not here. Who is? But his ability to walk through the mist makes him the perfect six to your group of five, and the rightful witch hunters that I need. Are you looking for something? Or are you just? I go where the lantern bathes me. When I received uh, my letter, it didn't just fall out of a moving train, which I guess I haven't seen that before, but that was pretty weird. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was pretty weird. It was one of the weirdest experiences in my life, for sure. The, The letters on the paper, on the parchment, 
bathed in the lantern light. And I go where the maiden beckons. She drew me here. Oh god, you got a maiden? Everybody here has got some sweetheart. Except for old Jericho Sticks. Well, oh. if you mean us no harm, and you can protect us from the mist, then we will protect you as our guide. Yes. Do you have any friends, Jorgen? Oh. Oh, we're we'll gonna look down. <laughs> My hood comes over a little bit. I just say. Not anymore. Jorgen? That's where you're wrong. You have five friends right here. Virgil doesn't count. <laughs> but I do. That makes six. Oh, six. Well, I didn't want to presume you are a lord. Well, I, I presumed for a lord once, and I, I ended up in a cage for quite a while. It was really more of a broom closet. To each their own friend. Philip, you said that you arranged our meeting here? Why? Straight to business, I see. I like that. Yes. And you said something about hunting witches. Well, you see, old sport, I didn't extend the hand of friendship and an invite to my humble abode for no reason. You see, here in Druskenwald, I've got a big problem with a capital P, and that rhymes with T, which stands for too many witches. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, sounds like a problem. Um, and we're the ones you need to help deal with the wishes. Yes, I'm afraid there are just too many witches. Thirteen too many, to be exact. One for each of the provinces of this domain. So nowhere is safe from Mother Midnight and her coven. They've been around for years, but never have they been this feisty and antagonistic. I mean, look above you at the moon with a face only a mother could love. I can tell you it wasn't always like that here. My name isn't Philip Druskenwald. The coven of the Midnight Moon is up to something truly nefarious. I just know it. And while the good people of Druskenwald are in danger, Lord Philip Druskenwald cannot sleep a wink. And that's where you all come in, my associates. I'm putting together a team. You all have friends in high places that, to put it in colloquial parlance, and therefore a unique set of skills, uniquely suited for my unique problem. My unique problem of witches. Say no more. You tell us where they are. You tell us how to defeat them. And consider it done. I like the way you think, Marius. And of course, a successful businessman like myself, I don't expect you to lend your blades and banjos and shovels to my cause without a fair and proper trade that's beneficial to all parties involved. Fortunately for me, and you, I'm a bit of a collector, and the scope of my interests and hobbies spans the whole of interest. My wife Adela, who's the most enchantingly beautiful woman in the universe, by the way, tells me I have to get rid of some of my old junk. But as the wise ones say, one's man, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So allow me my allow me to offer my junk as thanks and proper payment for your time, effort, and skills to pay the bills to kill witches. If you kill Mother Midnight and put a stop to whatever nasty business she and her daughters are up to, I will gladly give you a firm handshake and the ancient artifact that will handily and conveniently solve all your problems. Talk about an offer you can't refuse. Well, either way, you can't really refuse. Since while the coven of the Midnight Moon lives, the mists around Druskenwald are one way for everyone, but the vagrant, mysteriously. That froggy fellow sure is full of surprises, but to put a fine point on it, you're all trapped here until Mother Midnight is dead. At least that's my best guess, and that's all we have, so it'll have to do. Wait, 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 you mentioned uh, artifacts. Oh, yes. You, you couldn't possibly know what I'm thinking or looking for, could you? Well, maybe I could. And with a swift motion, Philip reaches into a drawer beside him and produces a crystal ball, which he gives a light toss into the air. It floats at his eye level and starts to glow with a shimmering light as a swirling wisp of color appears within. Borrowed this from the old ball and chain, since it does a bang-up job showing rather than telling. Adela really does have a, such a curiosity and fascination with the spiritual realm. But don't tell her I snatched a crystal ball while I'll be sleeping in the death doghouse for a week. Anyway. Let's take a look at the fabulous prizes that can and will be yours. Philip snaps his finger and immediately the smoky swirl within the crystal ball takes shape into what appears to be a pendant in the form of a belladonna plant with three ripe berries with a long chain attached and shimmering in silver as it rotates within the ball. Since you've been so patient, Yorgrim, we'll start with you. You don't need me to tell you that this is the Nightshade Amulet and that your better angel will be very interested in using it to reclaim a bit more control of the mist she claims to be the mistress of. I'm glad to kill your witches, if that's the prize, and if it takes just a couple names off my stone. 
I love to hear it. I gotta get rid of it, and I'd rather I'd rather no one have it but you, Yorgrim. Philip snaps his finger again, and the nightshade amulet shimmers and fades as another artifact takes shape. It seems to be a stone statue of some seated crocodilian creature with bright gems encrusted all over it. And for you, you. Captain Cratch, the idol of Croxagor, all you have to do is take that exotic cutlass of yours, tip it to the head of the reptilian god, and boom! The souls the blade has stolen will be returned to their proper keeper. Your curse will be lifted, and your skin will turn back to something someone would want to make a set of luggage out of. You're saying you can fix this? I can't, but the idol can. And I gotta get rid of it, so I'd like for you to have it. It's that same dead crocodile god that this thing was an effigy of. It is. How does one spell this crocodile dead god? (laughs) I don't fucking know. (laughs) When I first told you about it, I said I couldn't even pronounce it. I can only pronounce it because he just said it. (laughs) (laughs) Crocodile? Crocodile? With another snap, the idol of Croxagore shrinks and glows, and soon it becomes a gilded chalice made from rose gold, shimmering in pinkish light with similar rosy water within the goblet. Speaking of breaking curses, we have the Grail of Dawn for brave Sir Marius. You'll get more than a sip from this cup, and it packs way more of a punch than giggle water. Wait. Down the whole thing, and it will take care of your complexion and much-needed dental work. But wait, there's more. How does the divine radiant power of the sun itself sound to solidify the might of Vitonia? No, no, no. You, you you are not telling me that you own the Grail of Dawn. Of course. It's in my chateau. And how am I supposed to believe you? That you just you just happen to have this Grail that I've spent 50, 60 years looking for. Ah, oh, what a shame you hadn't gotten here sooner. You could have had it 50, 60 years <laughs> earlier. And I could have been without witches for 50, 60 years <laughs> earlier. Prove it. I just did. It's there in the ball. I'm having a masquerade, and when I do, you can see it in the flesh, or, in this case, in the chalice. It does seem awfully convenient. But we're not done. He snaps again. The image within the crystal ball shifts and changes again as Lord Philip's command, and soon within is a cracked bell of jet black metal adorned with skulls and raven feathers. And for our mysterious master maven, Miss Nightborn, mm. we have the Shadow Knell. Each ring of this deathly artifact will break the barriers, keeping your beloved higher power from a rightful domain. Not to mention teaching y- teaching all you know who to keep her feathery fingers out of cookie jars she has no business sticking them in. <laughs> oh, that juicy. Virgil, keep your feathery fingers I'll, out of cookie jars around. I'll look upon it and <laughs> nod very slowly. I did not think that I would want the artifact that you show me. But it is what my heart desires very much. And don't I know it? We all have something we want. I want to be rid of witches, and if this is what it takes, then this is what it takes. I will join you in this quest. Love to hear it. He snaps again. And the bell in the ball thins out and turns into an intricate bit of wicker, string, feathers, and beads carved from ancient stone, all woven together in a web-like pattern. And Farina the Hawk's Blight will absolutely love the Wicker Dreamcatcher. Just sleep beneath it and your soul can travel to anywhere in Avantress in the plains beyond while you dream. So you can spread the Hawk's Blight anywhere your heart desires. Ha! Really? Anywhere. Anywhere. If you dream it, if you believe it, you can dream it or something like that. <laughs> I read it in a book once. Alright. I'll do it. And with a final snap, one last time the artifact changes shape and within the ball is nothing more than a simple key. But rather than it being forged from metal, it seems to be crafted by a semi-translucent material in the color between yellow and orange. Last but not least, we have my old pal Jericho. For you, the amber key. It'll turn off the voices without the mess. The happy medium of what you've been looking for. I like that very much. Are these like pretty witches or like are they are they gross witches? Can we can we resolve? Depends on the witch, really. Can we resolve this perhaps through a song and dance number, or is it we just gotta kill? Them? Maybe one or two, not the whole lot. Well, I suppose I, I, I'm I'm okay at, at killing folks. So so is especially Virgil. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. 
That sounds mighty nice. All right. Then he reaches forward. Let's all shake on it. And from each of you, he motions to shake your hand. I put my hand out first. Thank you, Philip, for bringing us together. I, I think fate is intertwined very much. Oh, yes. Yes, Miss Nightbone, I do agree. And he will shake each of your hand as you're willing. Before I, re- I reach out, but before I shake his hand, I look to Briggsley and I say, I told my friends here, one of the tenants is to avoid negativity. One of the other tenants is to also always aid. Your people are in need of help, and so are you. I'm avoiding negativity and choosing to believe that you will lead me to this cup. If I find that you are lying, there will be consequences. He, you see a smile alight across his entire face. Um, I won't even make you roll for it. It is, it is a smile of sheer um, genuineness. As he reaches out and grabs your hand, he clasps it to the side. You've got it, my boy, you've got it. This witch problem has been plaguing me for far too long, and if I can help you and you can help me, then by Jove, that is exactly what we need. Then we have a deal. And I look to Briggsy, and I just nod at him. Now, Our fates are very much intertwined. <laughs> uh, I haven't... Shaking his oh, hand, yeah. I see. Uh, I, I'm not shaking his hand. I was looking to uh, Briggsy as, a, not letting me know that. as uh, a reassuring a voodoo gun. <laughs> of the tenants. Look, um, I'll, I'll yes. let Morgan go first. I'm, I'm just kind of like, you know, narrowing my eyes at him. I would reach my hand out and go to shake. Uh, Philip's hand, and as long as he. Psych! I was gonna say. Oh! <laughs> Damn! God, idiot! <laughs> uh, uh, you thought? Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, I would, as long as he presumably takes my hand, that when we go to uh, shake, I would grab his hand. Um, not like really pull him in, but just not let him go. Um, and then. That's uh, I've been tricked once before by someone promising something <laughs> I, I wanted. That person was dear to me. I would have given my life for them. You, I don't know. How is it that you know all of our deepest desires? Well, that's an easy thing, friend. When you're trapped in a land like this, you've got all the time on your hands that you need. I acquired these artifacts somehow, and I inquired their importance. Through them, I heard about you, all of you, wandering wayward travelers as you were at the time, and I called you here. What good is this artifact to me? But it could do you a lot of good. What are these witches to me? A nuisance, an absolute nuisance. <laughs> well, I don't like, well, if you don't like witches very much, neither do I. We're going to kill some witches, Yorgrim. You want to be friends and also kill witches while we're friends? You, yeah. don't, you don't want to be friends with me. Oh, no, I would like that very much. It's a quick end. Oh, but no. I'll bury these witches. Oh, I get it. Did you shake your hand? I sit back down. And before you let go, he'll, he'll clasp your hand, too, and he'll look you straight in the eyes. You have no reason to trust me. And to be frank, I have no reason to trust you either. But all I have is hope, and in a land like this, all you can have is hope. So, let's hope that we're both going to do what we need to do here. I actively nod my head when he mentions hope. I I have no hope, but I work to restore it. He slams you on the back, it, and it it's not painful. It's a, it's a hearty, friendly pat on the back as he agrees with you. <gasps> Now, Briggsy, I sense <laughs> some hesitation, but I'm not surprised from the cutlass. All right. It seems a little fishy, you know what I mean? A little convenient that the six of us are here, and that you just happen to have everything we need. Oh, yeah, it's very Well, convenient. to be fair, in my art gallery in the chateau, I've got even more than that. I could have called 45 of you if I wanted, but I had to find all 45, and you were the first six I found. Look, at least half the people in this carriage are very easily tricked. And I'm not looking to be tricked again. I got a lot, I'm losing things to lose. So, I know it's you. It's you crossroads, isn't it? 
Show yourself. You're not gonna trick me again. You understand? Would you would you like to look inside of my coat? You wanna pat my face? You wanna feel my rear? What do you need to do to know oh. that I'm not Mr. Crossroads? I immediately pat his face. <laughs> <laughs> you do, and you can feel you can feel the firm cheekbones in his face, the very square jaw. There's uh, even though he's cleanly shaven, aside from the pencil thin mustache, you can feel the light um, beginnings of stubble and the five o'clock shadow that comes along with it. And I can tell this mustache is fake. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Exactly what I wanted. Uh, <laughs> you swear on everything, including including that wife you love so much, that you are not Mr. Crossroads. I swear on Adela's life and mine that I am not Mr. Crossroads. Oh, you mean? All right. Well, like I just said, I don't have much left to lose, so I'll reach my hand. He reaches out and he vigorously shakes it. Sorry for the smell. I don't mind it at all. Now that's the proper caper. Pleasure doing business with you, my witch hunters. And to sweeten the deal, I've even thrown in a house for you all to stay in whenever you choose while you're here in Druskenwald. The old Lockwood estate, but most of the locals call it the Crooked House. And most of the locals think that think it's haunted. But I know you fine folks don't either believe such rumors or care one way or the other if it's haunted. Sound like a deal? The what manner? The Crooked House. It's the Lockwood estate or the Crooked Lockwood House? Lockwood estate, thank you. The locals call it the Crooked House. So, a couple of questions. One, your name is Druskenvold, and this land is Druskenvold. So is this this whole place is yours. This whole place belongs to me and my wife Adela. But we're trapped here just as much as you are until these witches are gone. You're trapped too, in your own land. The only one that can go in, in and out is the vagrant, the stranger, or no name at all. Do you have any idea why? My only guess is it's these witches, something to do with Mother Midnight. As her power's been growing and these witches' powers have been growing, they've been wreaking more havoc on this land than you can imagine. And the more havoc they wreak, the worse and worse things get. Do you find the Vagrant to be an enemy? I don't think he's an enemy, but he's definitely not a friend. What his real goal is, I don't know, but for the right amount of coin or trinket, he can get a few things done, like delivering a few friends to my doorstep. Understood. When did the trouble begin? Centuries ago. Once the witches st- first started deforming in mass, when the whisperings of the name Mother Midnight started arriving at my doorstep. That's a long time to have witches. Glad you're in. What took you so long to get help? Well, at first it was just whisperings. And for all I knew, they were just speaking of Mother Night. What do you know of this Mother Night, the uh, leader of the Coven, I imagine? Mother Night? No. Mother Night's more like a goddess. She's worshipped. I uh, look up to the ceiling of this cabin, uh, the carriage that we ride in. Um, Do you know if it is associated with the strange face we saw on the moon? Ah, I'm glad you asked that question. The strange face in the moon didn't start appearing until this coven of witches, 13, Mother Midnight at the Head, started really getting into their nefarious deeds. Once they got their tendrils into the land, the moon changed shape. Perhaps these witches are not all that. Perhaps not, but the things they do sure are. Missing children, families. And on top of that, it seems like beasts being born with things not quite right. What do you mean by that? Not quite right. It's a uh, not talk I like to have around uh, mixed company. How do we find these witches? Well, you could start in Cyril. I think uh, I think you could find a lead there. But you'll need a night's rest. I, I almost hesitate to ask, but with the moon that the way that it is, that is not saloon's moon. No. Is there no sunrise? Not in this land, friend. When you We've say- got dusk to midnight, and that's all you've got here. When you say saloon, I turn immediately, lifting up my mask, and spit on the floor. <clears throat> Uh, I, I 
Would I have noticed? I would make a show of it. Okay, I would pretend not to notice. Oh. <laughs> Do I notice? I pretend I did. Yeah, I would. I would. I would pretend not to notice. Just be cool. Um, yeah. Is how nice polite guy. This may be a foolish question, but how do we tell the time, the hour, the day? Well, for me, I use my pocket watch. For you, just guess. You think they sell fancy pocket watches where we're headed? In Cyril, maybe. They're a bit uh, religious, so they they might have the uh, symbol of Fultus on it, but it'll tell the time they're the same. Fultus? Yes. Like a foal? Like a weird horse? By weird, I mean small and young. No. Oh. I'm, this is all. This is all very overwhelming. I'm not used to. This is very exciting. So you're telling me that you got thirteen witches. Thirteen. Thirteen witches. He said that many times. A lot of witches here. Yep. We need to kill all of them. I feel that if you can. Manage with Mother Midnight, the rest will go down. A snake without a head, after all. And to make sure that I'm clear, Mother Night is a goddess, but Mother Midnight is a witch. And one worships Sierra, and she decided to name herself Mother Midnight. It's possible. What do I know? I just know I have a witch problem, and I need it gone. I'm not sure starting with Mother Midnight is the path forward. The wisest path. If I saw a beast with 13 legs, I would start by cutting off the legs. I agree with Lathika. She's correct. The choice is yours. I'm not going to tell you which witch to go after first. Which witch is which? I don't know. Well, maybe if we killed Mother Midnight, they all die. Or they all scatter in fallen ravines or something. If that I die in Dark Domain, do I die in real life? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I don't, mean, I don't know much about witches, but I know about hags. And I know you gotta kill each one to kill them. We have to find them first. He's got a good point. I'm hoping our friend Philip here can point us in the right direction. This guy's thinking of logistics. To what? These 13 provinces where these 13 witches reside. Yeah, they're all around you. Which province are we in right now? Well, it depends. Well, Druskenwald is the whole place. A map, uh, any kind of direction would be helpful. I can get you one. Not tonight, but I can get you one by tomorrow. How far is it to the estate? We're on our way there now. Would you like to know more about it? You're going to stay there. You might as well know what you're getting into. Why is it called the Lockwood Estate? Well, let me tell you. (laughs) Well, that's because it was the house of Eustace and Petunia Lockwood, one of the most prominent landowning families in Folsom's, of which they mostly grew tea that's still enjoyed to this day by much of Druskenvold. And it makes for dynamite Earl Grey, I might add, which was Petunia's prize recipe. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. You see, the fine people of Folsom's are deeply religious, and they love their god Foltis quite a bit. Folsom's. That's where we are, by the way. Cyril's and Folsom's. But old Eustace never cared much for religion, so he and his wife had a house built a good distance away from Cyril, the capital of the province. And so he could oversee his lands and fortunes away from the religious demands of the city. Not Bishop Renault, the lord of full sense, received so much tax money from the family, he left them be. Smart thinking, if you ask me. And about 20 years ago, Eustace began complaining about nightmares that increased in their frequency and intensity. The last time he was seen, apparently, it was positively a mess and had confined, confided in several trusted friends that he was worried he was going mad. Then one day, the entire family vanished, including their two children and butler. When the townsfolk checked out the place, there was neither hide nor hair of any of them. But they quickly reported strange occurrences that spooked everyone so badly that no one would claim the deed for the property. And so in his infinite generosity, Archbishop Renault gifted the estate to the Crescent Court. While taking the numerous acres of farmland for the Church of Fultus, so now I am gifting the old house to you. Philip reaches into his breast pocket and pulls out a folded document on weathered paper with faded ink. Placing it on the table, you all sit at. You can see a family crest on the letterhead of a white peacock flanked by two fruit trees. And on that convenient note, I believe we've arrived at the Lockwood Estate. You all can settle into your new home while I continue on to Cyril to get an update from the Archbishop on the goings-ons of these evil-doing witches. Where it is that Mother Midnight herself is the member of the coven active in Folsom's. So, why not try to cut off the head of the snake, I say, and I'll say it again. With a heavy click of a latch being undone, the door to the carriage opens to the darkness of night outside. Neither the chill of the night air nor the sounds of evening penetrate the threshold to the lounge. 
Philip raises his hand in a gesture to imply that you are all permitted to leave. Here's your stuff. Just to be clear, you say we don't believe in ghosts after we were quite promptly assaulted on the train right here by horrible spirits. Well, those were souls, not ghosts. We'll take care of whatever's in the house. And you have I'm, to hear it. It's all yours. And I leave the I leave the uh, the, the carriage. Okay. I can leave that. Virgin, Please be polite. I've you got a meeting no, with the Archbishop and Cyril, and I can't be late. No, why would you even say that? He's he's a lord. It's very nice to make your friendship, Mister Mister Lord, sir. It was great to meet you, Jericho. And this place is yours. It's all yours. Do what you want with it. We own it collectively. You collectively own it. Redecorate it, burn it down, do what you want. One six of that place. That math checks. (laughs) I appreciate the equity. And I'll shake your hand. He shakes your hand. It was great to meet you, that cutlass. I'll give him a look up and down and just hop out of the carriage. Nice to meet you too, Farron of the Hot (laughs) Splite. Flip my tail. Yowza. Yeah, Don't tell it ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would just nod to him and walk off the... Walk off the uh, He'll carriage. pat you on the back as you make your way off the train. The whole carriage is like... Raise his like yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, stand and uh, gather my things and then go up to Philip. Thank you, Philip, for bringing us together and for... The potential reward. I, uh, I see great things in our future. Challenges, perhaps. If you should need anything, we know where I live. And I'll get off the carriage. He's, he smiles at you. I'll call if I need. Please see you soon. do not forget the map. I won't. I'll have it with me hand in hand next time, and maybe you'll get to meet the old ball and chain. Thank you. Have a good night's rest, and when you're ready, head on into Cyril. All right, we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, see you tomorrow in the morning, maybe. Well, I guess it's not really morning. Uh, when I can make it, I'll be here. Um, I will attempt to tip the driver. If they got a gold piece, hold it up. The door slowly shuts as you walk towards the driver and you hold up a gold piece. Without even looking towards you, he snaps the reins and the the carriage begins to move. Slowly at first and then faster as it picks up speed around a small uh, circular driveway at the front of this house as it it, it takes the pathway um, back on out and towards the tree line. Well, it is always nice to walk. That was mighty kind of you. I'm, I feel foolish and, and rude that I didn't offer. You did such a great job getting us to our new home, our beautiful new house. As the clopping and rattling of the carriage grows distant, you stare up at your new home on the hill and immediately understand why locals call it the Crooked House. The winding path at the hill, choked by overgrown weeds and the roots of spindly trees, leads to a tall, multi-story building. Veined with ivy where there's not a single straight line or, sh- or right angle that you can see. Its unsettling construction is made even more eerie at the clap of thunder that booms overhead and rain begins to fall. As I I lift up my shield to kind of uh, shield myself from the rain, no pun intended, and uh, I I look at the house and I squint my eyes and I say, uh, I have many thoughts. I do not trust this Philip as far as I can throw him, but I'm trusting in my God and his tenets. Whatever might be in there should not be a surprise to us, like the train was. But I don't want to assume. Well, gosh, that's that's quite the, uh, it's a very lovely, lovely piece of property. It's surprising that no one wanted to, uh, wanted to take it. Jericho, that should be the least surprising thing about this. It's a bit of a fixer-upper, I guess, uh, Look, the most important, but I guess we can renovate. It's nicer than any accommodations I've ever heard. Probably the same for me, at least on land. Um, As you look up, you notice that the the mist around you is much thicker now, and the, the time of 
night essentially that you were at was closer to dusk but it is getting darker overhead as you look more at the sky you see that that darkness might not be because of the time of night but more so because of the thick storm clouds that have rolled in is they're billowing around the treetops hanging so low that they're intermingling with the fog and the trees out of character do we have any sense of the time Mary's upset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to get out of this rain. And I'll start to kind of hustle towards the yeah. front of the house. Yeah. I'll walk how, with how him. much of a downpour is it? Is it just a sprinkling? It's, it's begun to absolutely pour. I would not be in a hurry. I need you I all to myself. make a dexterity saving throw, except for Brizzy. Oh, sweet gods almighty. Ooh, saving throw, you say? Yes. Killed it. And by that I mean I probably did not. <laughs> Can I see whatever's coming? A deck saving? I got 14. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay. Oh dear, I, I did know. Really. Have you ever dodged the rain? Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, 17. <laughs> uh, 9. 23. Um, okay. <laughs> Briggsy begins to make his way towards the porch as the torrential rain begins to pour harder and harder. And as you're standing in it looking around, you see the flash of light um, before you hear the sound of thunder as lightning cracks down at a tree nearest you. Both Farron and Yorgrim, you are going to take some lightning damage as you're going to take eight points of lightning damage each as Farron, the branch that is severed, falls and smacks into you, a jolt of the electricity still lingering in it. And Yorgrim, you're hit directly, but you're an orc, so you're fine. And you don't die outright. Is she, <laughs> is she pinned beneath the tree or anything? Uh, no, okay. I'm not going to make okay. that happen. Jesus. So I got hit by the tree. I'm going to say you got hit by a falling branch. It's not like a gigantic one, but... Shit. I would, I'd make sure she was okay and then hustle the fuck to the house. <laughs> like, goddamn... Not me, though. Breezy. Cool. <laughs> Dude, it's my steak. <laughs> oh, shit. My bad. Ooh. Are we good? Oh, the branch! <laughs> Sarah, oh, I'm the branch. oh no, Marius, okay, that's okay. That's, you're a groom. Are you alright, <laughs> my new friend? <laughs> you can go ahead and flip over the map. Uh, I'll help you up. The map. And I'll place your tokens, you. please, at the porch. Let's go. I'll, I'll like decline. I'll wow. kind of smack your hand away. I'm fine. I'm fine. Very, good, very good. Where's the entrance? That looks like stairs to a porch. It does look like an entrance of some kind. The wind from the descending storm yeah, chills you to the bone as it makes contact with your rain-damp bodies. You make your way up the treacherous and overgrown pathway to the top of the hill where the manor house stands, and immediately you notice the vine-covered porch that wraps around the front and side of the structure. Its sagging awning with hanging shingles and wooden beams create a personified illusion of a malevolent grin filled with yellowed, crooked teeth. At the back of this awaiting maw is a stout front door flanked by darkened windows. Uh, I'll walk up to the door. I will extend my hands. I, um, I need you to roll for initiative. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 it's a mimic! <laughs> 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 this is fine. This is I step back and I laugh and I say, Saloon wish this. <laughs> <laughs> you can make the flames. I can. Um, I will attempt to open the door. You... You place your hand around the knob and you slowly move it, and it is stuck at first. You believe that it's locked until you hear a soft grinding of the rust breaking away from the inside of the lock, and it is able to be opened. Unlocked. Uh, Let's let ourselves in, shall we? Where's our house? And uh, I open the door and I look into what I assume is a very dark entrance. As you step into the Lockwood Estate following the heavy creaking thud of the front door, the very first thing you see is the creature swooping down from above. Your heart leaps in your chest, but you then realize this monster is simply a large bronze statue of a peacock with its wings, tails, and talons outstretched majestically on the marble pillar at the center of the foyer that once might have been quite grand, but now is in the disrepair of two decades of neglect. A crooked chandelier gently rocks above you and cracked tile stretches out before you as the musty smell of an old abandoned house fills your nostrils. 
the staircase rises and snakes along the wall to the second floor, from which a darkened balcony overlooks the six of you. On your level, there are three doors going in each direction, all of them closed. We must be careful. Even if Philip has the best intentions, there could be things lurking here or squatting. Well, you know, I, I, th there could be a bunch of gross animals. And, you know, I once was in a haunted house myself. It was the old Pie Timer place. And you gotta be, we gotta stick together. We shouldn't go in separate areas and watch out for a lot of spiders. And with round baubles. Spiders. Oh no, yes. Baubles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is a pie timer? <laughs> oh no, it's this, the, well, it was the old pie timer place. It was pie timer's place. What is a pie timer? I, that, that was the place. It was the, it was the name. What's in the name? I could have written, I did write a song about Pie Timer, and I'll sing it to you later. <laughs> Who was the last to enter the parlor? Not me. Uh, that was the first. Absolutely not me. Uh, wow, you seem to be in the back. No fucking chance. <laughs> Fuck I was hustling, so I probably would have gone in pretty quick. Who I, say, you I, I think Jorgrim and I are hanging out in the back. Yeah. I, I, Everyone I, roll a d20 and tell me who gets the lowest roll. Oh, this is horseshit. Uh, yeah. Except like, is is Lethica, because Lethica did enter I got first. a natural 20. Well, oh, uh, yeah. The dice are spooky. Fuck, I got a 19. Get fucked. Oh, I got a 1. I got a natural 1. Yeah, you're fucked. All right. All right. right. This is fucked. I'll switch up for real. Struck by lightning, natural 1. Perfect. Just makes you, sense. you may continue. What you're I'm doing. literally going I just need to know the information. Well, uh, so, I, I, well, it was, oh, it was no. old Mr. Pie Timer. So I think that. Oh, so Pie Timer is his name. Well, yeah, that was, that was the place. So I, I know a thing or two about sneaking around spooky mansions. Jericho is being unclear about the name of this Pie Timer gentleman, but... No, I'm being very clear. His name was Pie Timer. Initially, you were very unclear. I'm saying that there's wisdom in his words that we stick together when we initially explore this estate. Understood. I propose that we'd start on the left and make our way around. Uh, before proceeding, I would uh, hold uh, my hands up to my chest and, and say a small prayer to uh, Lathander uh, and try to cast uh, Divine Sense. Ooh. Until the end of my next turn, I can sense anything affected by the Hallow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend within or undead within 60 feet. I, I know I'm going to get Virgil. Uh, and just see if there's, yeah, it's it's uh, Celestial Fiend or Undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover or affected by the hollow, the hollow spell. So I'm just trying to sense. And what's the 60 feet? It's only 60 feet. So, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, uh, if we're in here. Yeah, he has like line of sight of. Right. Or well, the hollow, hollow doesn't say. So they're not behind total cover. Is. So if, if they're like behind the door, it would work, right? Um, until the end of the journey. What I will say is that you get the overall spooky vibe that you are not alone. That's fair. That's fair. I'll I would say I'll there's, take it. there's nothing in this room presently, totally. but you definitely feel a presence from this room. All right, just a, a small prayer to Lathander. Yeah. I, I radiate red goldish light, and that's, thank you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Well, you, Lethica, that sounds like like that sounds like what was it? What was it that, that, that Lord Philip said? A proper caper? <laughs> I think I hate capers. Jericho, <laughs> I, think, I don't like capers. Either. I think I might you I start using capers. that in my lexicon. We are not alone. Are we not? Virgil says we're all going to die. He says he's going to eat our flesh once we do. Everybody dies. That's not your cycle of things. Oh, that's tr well. You is start dying the second you're born. Regardless. Is that true? Gosh, really? Regardless. Sounds right. uh, this sounds lovely. The future does not matter in this present moment. The idea is that there is something here in this estate. We are not alone. Keep on your guard. I'll, um, hearing that, uh, I agree. And I will, uh, un- uh, hook my um, uh, chakram from my uh, from my waist and uh, hold it up and looking through it, a gesture to this door here on the left. Of any of the doors, I, I would propose we start with this one, arbitrarily, of course. I would draw my sword, holding up my shield, and walk towards the door. 
Give it a try. Does it does it shine all the time? Is it a okay. no? Okay. It's like when you we, smite and stuff, right? Yeah, it's not just a, it's not like a like a torch. I'm thinking of the art. When I'm yeah. No, the art is uh, yeah. special. Uh, it's just a sword. Okay. When you see it, but if I if I'm smiting, you know that's a different story. It's okay. like how Flames. Barnabas has his crab claw in the art, but that's only I don't get that for a long time. Right, <laughs> it's, a, it's more of a crab foot for a while. <laughs> I would attempt the door that you pointed to, see if it's unlocked. You walk up to the door on the left side of the wall, and as you step, the dust begins to bill up and erupt out of this, out of the carpet that your boots slam down upon. Um, you choke back a couple of coughs as. You swallow a bit of it back, and you reach the door, twist the handle, with a loud creak in the sliding of the tumbler within. The door is able to open with ease, though it sounds a little worse for wear. Without a word, I proceed, hoping that my companions don't leave me for dead. I'm right behind you. The rest of you follow in, and Jorgrim, trailing behind, as you begin to step through the doorway, You feel a breath on your neck as you slowly turn and standing there behind you is a man. And as you look at him, you notice that he's wearing a withered black, a weathered black suit and black top hat with gray mutton chops. His face bloated, one white glassy eye, his head forever tilted to the left as he looks at you and smiles. What should be a mouthful of teeth is empty, disgusting black maw, as what appears to be oxidized black blood begins to spill out of his mouth and down his face as you stare at him. What do you do? <laughs> I suppose I'd be taking a bit back. <laughs> shit my pants and shit your pants are free. <laughs> so no, that's fine. Fine. <laughs> If you like to shit your pants, that's free. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, state your business, ghoul. It steps towards you. One step and then the other. Its head just lilted to the left. Its one milky white eye staring into you. That smile affixed to its face, but not quite a smile as much as a horrified grimace. I don't know what you guys have in that room, but there's something pretty horrible back out here. And I ready my shovel. Santa Claus is asking for you. I would I even? Would I hear this? Yeah, absolutely. You're not that far from it. Then I would turn around. I would turn around, and look through the doorway, and see what I can see. You turn and you step over to your room. You can't look over his shoulder. He's significantly taller than you are, but you're able to look through his arm and. You look back into the room that you'd all come from, and everything besides, even the dust, has begun to settle. I would look and see nothing, and and as as I continue and say, Yorgrim, I, I see nothing, and I would continue. I would continue forward. Yorgrim, it's okay. I get scared too. I sometimes think that my creators weren't really good at at spelling and made me a scared crow and added an extra d. So I understand that I get spooked sometimes too. Would you like me to stay with you? There are great many things that scare me, and all of them far worse than what's in front of me. Nobody sees this. Do I, do I still see him? Uh, do you turn and look at Jericho? Uh, yeah. When you turn back, where this man whose head was lilting to the left had stood is nothing. Just the room. It's empty. Jorgrim, please, we need your lantern. Get up here with me. It's okay, Jorgrim. I sometimes see and hear things that aren't really there all the time. And usually if I just sit and, and wait, it usually, usually stops and goes away. The spirits never leave me. They're in this place, the crooked house. They, they just sound just like Virgil. He won't, he won't leave me be either. Let's, after you. I'll walk up with my uh, lantern. One final glance back into the parlor. Check. No, it had been there. You'd seen it clear as day. No specter, no illusory shape. A full-fledged man. But no more man stands in this room. You turn and you make your way through the door. The circular room is built into the base of the manor's turret. It houses a modest gallery. 
Painting of, paintings of sweeping landscapes dominate the walls of the space, particularly showcasing crop fields, castles, orchards, churches, woodlands, and windmills, with at least one albino peacock hidden in each piece. Various religious paraphernalia, all featuring the silvery lunar iconography of the god Foltis, is displayed hmm. for aesthetic appreciation rather than worship. Several leering gargoyles perch amongst the dour busts of historical figures above placards forever faded from the years of neglect. The most prominent piece in this collection is an alcove at the far end of the room. Carved from now yellowed ivory is a larger-than-life statue of a muscular hunter with a tormented face grappling a grotesque, twisted boar fox hybrid with blood-caked fur and three jaws filled with rows of crooked, rotting teeth. From the pierced belly of this beast extends a network of root-like tendrils that grasp around the strained limbs of the man fighting for his survival. Does he look like he's losing? Yes. Unfortunate. Oh, cheery place here, huh? Eh? Um, looking around at all this, this like, plethora <laughs> of different artifacts and objects and wall paraphernalia. Um, mostly paintings. Mostly paintings. Yep. Do I get a sense of what the purpose of this room would have been in the good if, times? If a room had a name, like if you were playing Clue, mm. this would be named the gallery. A gallery? I would reach up in the painting with the man and the boar. It's a statue. Oh, it's a statue. Yes, it's an ivory carved statue in an alcove towards the corner. Okay. Similarly, I would reach up and kind of touch it. Uh, I would like you to roll a perception check for me, please. Oh, jeez. Uh, 25. That's good money. All right. You reach up and you run your hands along the edges of this statue, and it is it is vibrant in this room, the bright white ivory that it's carved from, even though it is covered in dust, it still stands out from the drab wooden uh, walls and the, and the mottled rotting wallpapers. As you trace along it, looking at this strange hybrid creature, the the tendril shooting from its ripped belly and wrapping around the man. They look like roots, almost. And your eyes are drawn up towards its face, where you notice that the eyes themselves seem to be completely blank. And I'll say you, you're you even able to tap on it and hear that this is not a solid piece of ivory. This statue is hollow. kind of tap and there's nothing in it. It's like an empty, like a vessel. Um, maybe it was saving on materials. It's not an unreasonable assessment. Oh, well. Are the eyes of it, like, like, you could put something in it, or like, yeah, it looks like you could put something in it. You could attempt to look into them. You'd have to climb onto the statue to do so. <laughs> I won't be doing that. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like things could be put in there. And I would say with a 25, when you tap it, it sounds like there might be something inside. Something small. And it, there was only in the last few taps where it almost sounded like the way that the sound reverberated it hit faintly on something. Not something quite solid, but you're not sure. Farron, please, what are you doing? Sounds like there's something in there. In the statue? I. Like what? How am I supposed to know that, boy? I just tapped on it. <laughs> That's a really excellent point. Are you, are you, you're really good with beasties, even when they're made out of stone or whatever that is? Just particularly. I just oh. tapped on the thing. Are you, are you good with, with animals of all kinds? Oh. Even gross, weird birds? Crows, particularly? <laughs> like behavioral courses? <laughs> I, I am. First, you should get to know fair. How dare you say that about a lady? I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's... I just, I get very nervous and scared, so that's why I'm sorry I lashed out to you, to you, Briggsy. I did, that wasn't very unlike me, but I, I do get scared in these situations. Even though I am a scared crow, I, I believe that I, it was a scared crow 
That I, I feel like that is the case. So right. I'll look around the base of it. Does it look like there's any like kind of like a like a piggy bank, perhaps? Might have an opening. Oh, roll another roll an investigation check. Ooh. Less good. Uh five. You looking around this, you can't see any kind of doors or exits, as it were. You imagine if there is something in here and you want access to it, you're going to have to smash the statue. Fair and so be it. If you believe there's something in there, then we own the place. There's nothing, no one has been here for as far as we know, and Philip is giving us the rights. Lead the way. Say the word. It might not be anything good, but... Not a change to say, I'm a bit curious. I'm uh, curious yeah. about what? About What's in the statue? And you, you, you're implying that you're going to smash it and dig it to it. Unless you feel strongly otherwise. I mean, if this thing's real ivory, this has got to be worth a pretty penny. We're going to destroy it. The first thing we do is destroy our own property. For what it's worth, we own it. Well, I own one sixth of it. And you may have one-sixth when it's in smithereens. Well, no, I own one-sixth of the whole piece. It's a little bit trickier, doesn't it? I, I don't think He's so. right. I'm quite familiar with property laws. <laughs> <laughs> you, you live in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know it, genius? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, you are so much smarter than I am. It's so nice to have friends who know things. I too am curious what is inside the statue, but I uh, would propose that we wait and show some patience before we open it. If we have uh, an estate to explore, uh, we can open it in the uh, well after we get to rest. Why don't you just look in one of them holes and point to one of the eyes that seem kind of open and see if you can take a look before we smash the whole thing. I look to Briggsy and I motion like he is more than welcome to do so. You're surprised to find that Lefik is also motioning at the same time. <laughs> no, you're no. the ones who want to see what's inside it. I don't particularly care. I just want, I, I want to own one six of this piece and you want to smash it to find out what's inside. So I actually just want to use, takes a look to see if it's really worth smashing. I don't care about the statue. I'm here to explore and Marius is a sense of something and uh, your grim is, is uh, seeing uh, uh, spirits. I, uh, there is more happening here than just the statue. I, I begin to sheath my sword and I, I look to Fair and I say, if, if you're not going to look, then I will. All right. I climb up and I peer into these horrible eyes. I need you to roll a sleight of hand for me. Oh boy. Wow. Well, you've ever seen the end of the lighthouse. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 Spoilers. And, Sorry. and then uh, Virgil's pecking at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it writes itself. There's, there's no literally the, Oh, so that's what Virgil meant when he said he was a Got you, got you. I mean, I guess Dex would be fine. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, no. this dude actually Dex makes more sense. Oh, yeah, well, it turns out the joke's on you, it's the same one. <laughs> Eleven. Okay. Oh, eleven. You sheath your sword as you as you grab <laughs> on to this ivory statue. It's tall. It is it is near Yorgrim's height. This is a gigantic ivory statue. Oh, as you begin oh, to put shit, your fuck. armored boots on top of parts of this hollowed C statue, crunch. as your weight outweighs the weight of the statue, Just as you shoot. begin to fall backwards, the statue comes with you. You are going to take... You're taking statue damage. I'm fine. I'm, are they, it's fine. It There's no way the statue can do 26 hit points. Four points. Wow. Place. Of bludgeoning damage as the statue falls on top of you I don't get out of and bed for breaks into a bunch of pieces. Oh, perfect. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh no. <laughs> <laughs> You're really ah. sending the armored guy up onto the hollow statue? Ah. Well, that's what I suggested. Hey, so you okay? As I stand up and I brush myself off, I take my sword out of my sheath and I, I kind of like, you know, draw a little bit on the carpet not the carpet, the stone, the floor, and I use my sword to kind of push some towards Briggsy, and I say, there's your piece. <laughs> and I begin to look through the smushed pieces. Look what you did. You... I ignore him. 
it makes you, you feel better, to, you can have mine as the as well. dust of the broken ivory begins to settle, um, you are able to start looking through it. And you do find something. A small piece of folded parchment. I pick it up. I told you something was in there. And I would, I would, I unfold it as the rest of the group wants to look at it. You open it, and scribbled on the parchment in a rough, haphazard scrawl, are the words: "Nightmares in the crooked house, grandmother's whispers in darkness, a windmill burns, the thing in the walls." It wants my teeth, bloody roots, eyes in the amber. Beware the below. I will not leave this place. The buzzing calls me. Remember me. And then a name, Gaston Doré. Gaston Doré. Uh, So then having read this and and shown it to whomever is looking over my shoulders, I would look to Lethica and say, you're the only one who agreed. You're the only one with a brain. There's something in here. Unbelievable. That's a little hurtful, Mary. And I kind of look at Jericho. Do, do you even have organs? No, no, I don't. That's why everyone here has got a brain. I've always wanted a brain. And a liver, too. I've been thinking about livers. Virgil's always saying how he wants to eat liver. Something oh. in the walls, and I had it to left it. And which one of you walked into the room last? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Yikes! Good. That's all. Uh, <laughs> I'll, roll yeah, I'll, roll right I'll roll for what I'll roll for what assaults my mind. I'll hand you the note if you're willing to take it. Oh yeah, I would absolutely take it. Because you're the only one it. who uh, has any common sense if here. If the spirits did not know we were here already. Now, uh, read the message out loud again. Oh, you want me to read the whole thing again? Well, who was assigned? I could use it. Who was assigned? I'll read it again. I assume you made a highly customized prop letter for us to have, right? If I hadn't woken up late, I was going to. I'm just kidding. Um, Nightmares in the Crooked House. Grandmother's Whispers in Darkness. A Windmill Burns. Mm. The Thing in the Walls. It Wants My Teeth. Bloody Roots. Embers her eyes in the amber beware the below I will not leave this place the buzzing calls remember me Jesus. signed Gaston Dre there are way too many words in that array of words that I don't like as far as prime <laughs> and other things go I'm upset I'm well, upset uh, fuck off you know, I, 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 I know I don't I have this. I know I don't have a brain. I just got this all this horrible uh, infernal juice and a filthy sack. But maybe the fellas were just writing the haiku. What was the name of the archbishop? Uh, Renault. Renault. Archbishop Renault. Renault. It's like the winery. The mystery thickens. I'm afraid. Uh, this uh, note speaks of a Gaston Doré. I would have assumed that it is. Uh, perhaps a note put here by Eustace or by the Archbishop, but this is some other individual we've not heard the name of yet. If I take a quick glance, like just around the room we're in, can I see any like uh, like a painting or even maybe the statue before was destroyed? If it looked like the figure I saw before, would they got the head tilted? I would tilt say in the you stared pretty firmly at the. Um, at that figure with the tilted head, they were definitely not the same person. The The figure in that statue was a very large, hulking, hunter-like man. Um, the figure in the other room had large mutton chops, uh, a, a very Tim Burton-esque top hat. Mm-hmm. Uh, much in this house would remind you of a Tim Burton film. Mm. Ah. <laughs> You're telling me this was worth it? We broke that statue. Who knows what it was worth? Ivory statues are worth a lot on the aftermarket. It was not intentional. Uh, his armor bro- uh, pulled it over. And, and and you mean to tell me that it wasn't worth it? And we got a, just a horrible note of, of some crazy guy. And you don't think that the note might have some sort of importance? I think the cost of owning this home is going to come in more than gold. Oh. Yeah, that's... I think that's technically true. I mean, there's a lot of hot costs involved in owning a house. Especially this big, we gotta hire help. 
with that, it comes on you much more quicker than you could have expected. The entire room shakes as a loud slam into the side of the house. The windows rattle. Jesus. The walls shake. The feet, you feel like it could be nearly earthquake levels of tremors in the size of this house as you all try to get your, your grips. And just as quickly as it came, it's gone. What else was that? Wonder of salt. It's probably just the storm outside. You man. must be kidding. That's what I'm hoping it is. No, uh, you... it's probably right. It's just, it's just the storm. Please, please do not fight. be delusional. There's no way that was the storm. Lethic, please. I agree. There is no storm I've ever been in that it could cause such a single and instant slam. Well, uh, perhaps a tree branch fell on the house. Same as it did to our friend, or to me. But the tree branch fell on you. I forgot. Because of the tree yeah, branch. Because of my memory. <laughs> um, it didn't sound like it was slamming into, like something was slamming into the house. It felt like something was slamming into the side of the house. Well, what, what, will we just take a look and confirm? There's probably just a tree branch leading right up against it. Who'd like to join? I'll, I'm going to go. I'll go with you. Oh, thank you I very think much. I think we're all there. a bit jumpy. It'll do us well to soothe our minds before we continue on. Oh, I'll stay right here. I'll go. Okay, yes, yeah, it's it's three's company, as they say. Come on, knock on your doors. Oh, we should not, don't knock on our walls. <laughs> <laughs> We're not waiting for you. <laughs> 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 I feel bolstered by this, yeah. this uh, song. Oh, yeah. oh my god! Um, my so hands I guess are we gonna walk out uh, back outside around? My thought was to so be so. There is a wraparound porch, yeah. so you could walk yeah. back out. Only, it only wraps around one side, but you could go to that edge there and see along that side. Yeah, of the house so we'll do say. we'll do that. There's also um, windows in the next room. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> So you no, you do fun. you you make your way back Mr. around Island. you you sneak <laughs> not necessarily sneak but you walk slowly and carefully as you listen and you're able to make your your way back outside the rain is coming down uh, much harder than it had been before you see lightning striking here and there thunder shaking the entire place not nearly strong enough to make that kind of jolt that you felt in the room. But as you look, look along the entire side of the house, you see nothing. Nothing here. Well, perhaps that won't ever happen again and we'll be totally fine. It does seem though that the storm didn't cause that. Let's step back inside then. That does seem to be the situation, Jorgen. You really do have a brain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, while we're inside, <clears throat> um, 15 minutes into this house and already we have split the party. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this is so wasteful. I'm going to like just take like shards of the... <laughs> oh, and it, it, like filling any pack that I have and I'm just yeah, going to start yeah. filling a bag. Do that easily. I'd say we'll we return back yeah. and, and yeah. let, him, I'll let tie, everyone know. I'll tie a really elaborate knot and I'll be like, you know, before I look like this, I'm so good at tying knots. And I was so good with the ladies that they called me Don Knots. Oh, did they? Oh, oh, oh Captain Tide Knots. Oh, gosh, those wow. are both great. Would you like us? Would you like me to write a song about Captain Tide Knots? Captain, <laughs> Captain Don Tide Knots? Is Tide your middle name? Well, I mean, it, it, it were two nicknames, but I'm really good at tying knots. What I'm trying to say. Wow. Oh, that's great. Can we get on with this fucking heist? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't find anything outside. No tree branches, nothing. Well, it's probably storm. Just well, with the wind. I mean, this this whole place just it's 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 weird. So maybe that's just how things are around. I hate to think that it may be the house itself. Yes, I am beginning to understand the nature of how you were tricked. I'll remember that. <laughs> Shall we continue on through this door or return back, back into the foyer? Forward. Forward into this room or forward into oh, the... I guess. <laughs> I think we should follow the perimeter of the house. I agree. I walk this direction. Okay. You all begin to make your way out of the room. 
as Yorgrim, you begin to hear the sound of buzzing. The buzzing bees. And at first, you keep your eyes moving forward, not wanting to see what is clearly behind you. But the curiosity becomes too much as you see a bee flit in front of you this way and that. One, two, three, four, five, six, twenty. And as you turn around, standing there is the image of the man from the statue, but not made of ivory, flesh and bone, as he's being completely devoured by bees, his flesh, he's tearing them away as he's trying to rip bees from him. They're spilling out of his mouth as he lets out a horrified scream. He begs and pleads for you as the bees begin to pierce into his flesh. What do you do? Uh, damn specters, what do you want? I would, I would swing my shovel like through them. You take your shovel and you swing it through him and the cloud of bees pulls out as what appears to be a slice through his torso as he looks at you in utter anguish as he disappears into vapor and mist. What's this? Yogan. You're right. Dark specters haunt this place. Describe. to be put to rest. Describe what you've seen. There was a man looked a lot like that alabaster statue. Was that alabaster? Ivory. Ivory yeah. statue. As far as I can tell. It was hard to. Uh, <laughs> like a piece. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Life. laughs> it was. It was hard to recognize. He was missing flesh and ripping off even more. And he was covered in bees. 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 Yes. Gosh. It's a terrible way to go. That was the more normal part of. The specter was missing half of his flesh. I, are you sure you're just not losing it? I've seen ghosts since I was very young. They speak to me, they come to me. It might be that's why none of you can see them, but I can tell you that this place is absolutely haunted. <laughs> All, all right, I'm sure, you know, I, I'm sorry you saw that bee guy. Um, why don't you go on ahead with the others as I finish collecting this? Okay. And I'll, I'll sort of stay behind a little bit and I'll, I'll finish cramming right. as much broken ivory in my bag as I can. Right. Bridget, Bridget, you know, you seem real sad about this because I got so cross at you because I was scared. I was afeard. You can have my portion of that pile of rubble too. It's a sign of friendship. Thanks. And I'll just turn back and I'll kind of continue. And, and then I'll join them. Why don't you go ahead and I'll, I'll, keep, I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Do. <clears throat> you enter what is clearly the parlor of the house and are greeted by four grim faces. Hanging above a large and cobweb-choked fireplace is a huge portrait of what is unmistakably the Lockwood family. Mm. held within a worn, gilded frame. The patriarch stares out from the painting glumly, his frown flanked by bushy, graying mutton chops that cannot conceal his heavy jowls. Dressed in a black suit with ruffled white cravat and cuffs, as well as a top hat, complete with an albino peacock feather. He stands beside his wife, who wears a perpetual stern expression with harsh eyes, peering past a pointed nose. Her dark brown hair is pulled up without a strand out of place, and she holds a fruit with a green rind that stands out against the gray of her bustle dress. The children look no more joyful than their parents. With the boy's sunken, pallid face of an invalid and the girl's wide, fearful eyes as she clutches a doll with white knuckles. While it seems that the family is staring forward in their immortalized visage, you swear it seems as if they are casting their gaze downward towards the most prominent furniture in the room. A large circular table made from a heavy oak is surrounded by six plush chairs, mm. their once luxurious upholstery now caked with dust. At the center of the table rests a, rests a rounded wooden board of impeccable craftsmanship, adorned with ornately emblazoned letters, numbers, words, and symbols. A small heart-shaped piece of wood with a glass disc at its center sits atop it. Those of you familiar with the occult would immediately recognize it as a spirit board with its accompanying planned check. 
Props! 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 Base. I don't know who made yes. the whole thing. I mean, that's like. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's oh a my big god, color. it's a punchet! Yeah, I got you. Holy smokes. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, it looks like the camera is oh. lost in the mist, too. Yeah, I don't know why it's like that. It's really bright. That's fucking badass as fuck. Holy, Holy shit. shit! I'm in Lurv. Can I take a picture of this? Yeah, of course. Oh, no, you may not. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh. This is a disaster. Yes. Great. Do we all touch it and then, like, get haunted? I'm sure this would be fine, Virgil. <laughs> I'm taking a picture of this so that my coworkers can see that they just shark themselves. All right, we got some crows, <laughs> and we got some blue roses, and we got more crowses and candles. Yeah, beautiful so blue awesome. roses. We've got Why some. Why do all eye, good? We've look got like an this. eyeball <laughs> in the center, and we've got all some, right. cool some moons. All right, so now what? Oh, well, we see heart. this thing. Yeah. Um, so does this, given this, it doesn't appear to be a dinner table. It doesn't appear to be no. any kind of a, a gathering table. No, this appears to be more of a parlor. If we were playing Clue. So, I, so like who a... among us would, would recognize <laughs> what yeah, this is? I don't is? fucking know anything about this um, shit. I would say Lethica would probably be familiar. I would think Yorgrim might have seen one. Uh, I can even imagine Briggsy. What is this? Oh, you don't want to fuck with that. Someone was dabbling in dark magics. What? What do you mean? It's a table with symbols and 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 some sort of of messages. Hey, Virgil, look. It's a couple of U's. Looks <laughs> like a the, game. A lot friendlier than you. It is no game. This is a spirit board. It is a method of speaking to those who have passed beyond the veil. Those have died. Uh. And how does this work? If we were to commit ourselves and sit down around the table, we would be able to use this marker. All of us joining hands over it. It would guide itself, and the message from beyond would become clear to us. And what I would caution is there's someone who practices uh, and is horribly cursed by uh, black magic. I don't necessarily recommend the left-handed path for everybody. Um, so what I would say is we should probably leave this alone. Well, I, knowing nothing about any of this, it seems as though this is extremely important to whoever was here before. And I look up above the hearth at the family portrait. I mean, why leave something here like this? Well, you say we're not alone. Is it theirs or is it someone else? It's spot in our house. Okay, right. I wonder if a better question is not why leave something here, because from what my gut tells me, something horrible happened to the last inhabitants of this house. But why bring something like this here? <clears throat> they clearly needed answers to something. It's the only reason you would ask questions beyond the veil. Is that what you do, Yogurt? Is that what you ask? The spooky ghosts? I don't ask questions. I just listen and try and put to rest those that seek me out. That sounds mighty pleasant. A lot more pleasant than, than what I would have expected from a spooky, spooky spirit board like this. Did you describe 
the first spirit that you saw. You mentioned Mr. You mentioned Mr. Bees. I don't know that I would have described uh, Mr. Bees. No, you just no, called I just and said, said you saw something, yeah. and Marius didn't see anything. I just said I have a I have a some spooky biz happening okay. out here, and Marius say, is like, eh. thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking at this painting, there are uh, many similarities between the man in this painting and the man you saw in the first room. They don't look like a happy bunch, them. This. The man in this painting resembles quite a bit of the first ghost I saw, though a little more put together. His head's not crooked. And, uh, a cro- crooked head? He had a crooked. He had a crook in his neck, and he had a big, gruesome smile, and he inched ever closer to me as I stared at him. He was horrible to look at. But, but you still there? Well, it seems as though that's him. I, did, uh, <clears throat> uh, Lord Philip, he mentioned that uh, the guy, the last time he was seen, he was losing his mind. He did mention horrible nightmares. And didn't that there fellow with the note, didn't he mention nightmares too? Who has the paper? I have it here, and I'll uh, unscroll the parchment and uh, read again about that portion of the of the um, the note from Gaston Doré. It's mm-hmm. the first line, right? But it is signed by a name that we do not recognize. We don't recognize that name, so maybe use this one really mad and assume the alternative identity or was possessed Ooh. by some other horrible beast. Let the gut speculates. <laughs> <laughs> if. If we believe, even for a moment, that the state is still occupied by the remnants of them, and I, I, I nod towards the photo, Lathanda helped me by suggesting we talk to them. Here's the thing. I've known a lot of desperate partners trying to talk to somebody, anybody, that'll listen and give them powers. So every fucking pirate you meet where I'm from, they all got some kind of magic, they all got some kind of power. But some lads, they contact the wrong fucking people or beings. And they get possessed, they get haunted, killed or worse. What's worse than that? (laughs) <laughs> it is not about power. It's not about... It's about always aiding. These people are hurting. They must be trapped here. Look, all I'm saying is that when you deal with the occult, you never know exactly what you're going to get. Something's going on here. Lord Druskenvald didn't put us in this home for us to die. He brought us here to his land to kill... 13 witches. It stands to reason this may be a test. You may want to see if we're up to the task. Using this could invite these spirits here that to test us. I was thinking that perhaps its very presence is inviting these spirits and was going to propose that we take it outside until we know more about this estate and have explored every room. I'm with you, Ogren. If we believe for a second that this family is haunting this estate, it may be ven- beneficial for us to contact I'm certainly no expert. Again, Lythana helped me, but I-, I think it might be worth it to try. Baron, you feel a tickle on your upper lip. As you reach up, you notice that your nose is bleeding. What's with the blood? Are, are you all right? What do you, I reach into my my coat and pull out a dirty handkerchief. It's like t- red and white checkered. Here, here you go, uh, oh, Miss Lady. Take it and just kind of wipe on my. Arm. You you can keep it. I got plenty of old filthy rags. Thank you. Do I feel otherwise all right? I haven't touched that. You can't yeah. remember the last time you had a bloody nose. It's very strange. That's that's not normal. 
Oh. From just out of nowhere, maybe from battle or getting injured or something, but no, I've not had a nosebleed in quite some time. Maybe it's all the dust in here. It might be allergies. I would sheath my weapon and sit down in one of the chairs to get a closer look at the board. You are able to do that. You're able to get very close to it. Do you touch it? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> are you high? <laughs> no, I, I would sheath. I'm holding my, my, sh- my shield. I would sheath my weapon. I would sit down comfortably, and I would lean over the table. I would not touch you it. You look down at it, and you see that this board is immaculately crafted. Though it's dusty, it's, it's succumbed to the age of this place. It doesn't seem to be as worn as a lot of the other things, though you by looking at it, you can tell there's been use to it. The planchette itself you can see marks where the grease of human skin, just the natural oils, have worn away a little bit at the edges of the wood itself. Um, The flowers and different parts of it, the moons that encircle the main parts of the board, are painted in this strange shimmery blue paint. Uh, some of it's chipped off, some of it's faded, but it's very pretty. I'd look to Lethica, and I say to her, "Are you against this?" Like with the statue, I think that we should err on the side of patience and caution. Because I, uh, like Briggsy, have heard terrible stories of using a medium such as this to communicate with the dead. I just think that if we can help them, this might be the fastest way. Well, well, maybe we could have a draw happy medium. If you go looking for something, you're going to find trouble. If someone's trying to talk to us, I'm sure you could give us a sign. And then you want to chat, and then we can touch the thing. I would lean back in the chair that I'm sitting in and look around. Give us a sign. Ooh, I'm sorry if that's offensive. <laughs> As you, as you say this, all of you are rocked forward as once again that loud slamming banging against the side of the house hits this room and all the the spirit board on the table lurches forward. The pan- planchette clatters against the wood and falls into place. All of you sway on your feet for a second as the dust begins to settle. Oh, I... I, I believe that the house is upset. I, I don't think this is an external force. I immediately looked at the spirit board. Has the marker moved? The planchette moved haphazardly, but it didn't land on anything. So you look to see if it lands on the word yes, or one of the letters, but it has landed on nothing, and it seems to be completely motionless. It's now that it occurs to me, was it on something when we came into the room? Yes. Do I remember what it, what it was on? Roll an intelligence check. Ooh, uh, my man! Yeah, you... Get some, Dad! Get uh, some! I got goosebumps. Uh, I've ri- I rolled this one. That was the 20, so I've, I'm going re- to roll a new one. Let's see. Hey, man, just don't yeah. fuck this up, you know? We, you don't don't fuck it up. From well, the party. I'm very intelligent as a cleric. Well... Thank you, uh, Parahelia. Parahelia. Hey! Oh, 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 hopefully you're, you're still here. Roger B! The B! Oh, Roger B! 17. Oh, oh big no. money. You do what? not remember. I would, uh, I would, uh, having been just, the house has been rocked, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I do not believe that Lathander would, would, would want me to deal with the occult. I don't think that this is the occult. I think that we are here to help whom, whomever may be trapped here. I think we Please. Should, I think we should leave. Every time we stay too long in a room, we get rocked and jostled. Yes. I don't think that he was responding. I don't know that sound. I don't think anybody was responding to us. I think that's... I think it's some kind of warning to tell us to get the fuck out of here. Lethica, please, how do you use this? Medius, I will teach you if we can explore the rest of the house first so that we might know what else is in here. I'm inclined to let sleeping dogs lock. We can always come back to this. It's not going anywhere. Stay right there. Virgil, I would ask very nicely. I've really, I've really let you rule the roost here, so to speak. Could you please stick around with this spooky spirit board, please, and let me know if anything bad happens to it? And I would like to leave. 
uh, Virgil here. You're going to leave oh, Virgil shit. in this room. The first time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Attempts to. And where are you planning to leave? Also, who was the last person to enter this room? Briggsy? I was. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, I, I, I would like to basically have... Yeah, you, you can move that okay. to the side for now, since you're... I'll, I'll, I'll keep it over here. Cause I got Just make sure room. not to lose the plan, chat. I would, I think I would keep, I would want to have, so we, where are all the doors here? So there's a door going towards the television. I see one door here. And then one towards the hallway. And then one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So. It's hard to hold the tape. I think I would post, I post Virgil up on this chair if the chair placement is significant. And I would want him to basically perch and keep an eye out and just triangulate and just keep uh, an eye. Roll a perception check and an investigation check I for Virgil. I can't wait for him to okay. tell you to go fuck just yourself. for me to have in my back pocket. Because he's the oh, worst. I do, he does not have perception on advantage checks. Or perception checks, I'm sorry. Oh, he fails, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. Right. Both for both of them? Oh, for perception. Perception, perception and, it, and an, like, uh, investigation. Investigation? Okay. I'm going to roll again. Because for, I'm also on. assuming he is doing things on his own against your will, so. Gosh, Virgil, I hope you're not bamboozling me. Oh, no, you're succeeding in bamboozling <laughs> me. Uh, He's like, oh, no. Yeah, it's nothing. Jesus. Oh, sharp. Uh, <laughs> investigation? That'll be an 18 for okay. old Virgil! Thank you. Awesome. All right, and which direction are you going? Uh, it doesn't look like we can go north, right? This is that, a fireplace. Yes. Oh, this is a door into, like, an oh, atrium. There's, there's an, a, there. an atrium area? It looks, so, the, yeah, this yes, is a door. a door. So this is a door here. This is look like a hallway. Yeah, there, so there's a door here. And then a door to the there's hallway. There's a door here into the hallway. From when I played Betrayal of House on the Hill, there's nothing can go wrong in the atrium, so let's We've go been in the hallway, though, have we? So we don't even know it's a hallway. No. So you we, don't know it's we a don't hallway. Know, we don't know what's, uh, no, what's in the next that's door. That's a Resident Evil hallway, if I ever saw one. I suppose <laughs> we go into the atrium. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I think that it does stand to reason that, uh, that Miss Nightborn here said that uh, we should just, uh, or somebody said that we should uh, go along forward, the house. Yeah. And just and go in a, go in a big circle or square or crooked uh, polyhedron. Uh, uh, Farron was the one who made the suggestion Farron, that so we go around the perimeter. Uh, Farron, I'm so sorry. I just presume because she just stands really tall and has that spooky mask that she just says all of that kind of stuff. It's all right. I don't take offense by it. Oh, good. Mesh, gosh, you're very gracious. I appreciate that. The first thing you notice as you step into this room is the bitter chill of a storming wind and the droplets of rain that are whipped into you, accompanied by the rapid-fire hammering of the sheets of participation, precipitation falling, upo falling upon the glass walls and ceiling of the conservatory you now step into. Desiccated vines and long-withered shrubs lay about their tomb of foggy window panes, with rusted gardening tools scattered about. On the cracked, moss-covered stone tile that makes up the floor of this room is a pile of jagged glass shards, and when you look up, you see its source. The roof has a sizable hole where the elements attempt to invade the house from, but the bizarre, irregular, and bent leaning of the upper floors create a makeshift canopy that prevents the storm from absolutely flooding the conservatory. It's beneath this hole in the glass roof that you see the most unsettling part of this room. Amidst all of the browns of withered vegetation is a single bit of life. A small tree grows from a patch of dark soil, wreathed in vibrant leaves and even bearing fruit with a yellowish-green rind. Even with the opening in the roof above, it should not be possible for any plant life to grow here. Yet the tree stands before you. We've opted to go into the atrium. In the conservatory. The conservatory, you idiot. Conservatory. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's a little misty. It's so washed out. I don't know. As you, said, as you said oh, when we first sure. came here, Briggsy, it is indeed a fixer-upper. So, <laughs> you find is, yourself uh, in this Gargamel. conservatory in which everything is dead, all but the one clearly bergamot tree, bergamot tree <gasps> in the one corner that does seem to have ripened fruit on it. But even with the water coming in from the rain, the amount of time that there have not been people here and just the state of this place, it is nearly impossible for this tree to still be growing. And that is what you see. And the fruit's right. And the fruit is right. Oh, sure. Um, I would be not really looking at the tree. I would look at the perimeter to see if there's any other entrance ways from the conservatory from the, to the rest of the house. 
Um, looking through, you see that there are two other doors. There's one immediately um, into the next room and then one into what you imagine or what you can see as the hallway, but you don't know that. So there are two doors. I mean, those are doors in this room. I, I see a door here, right? Yeah, so there, there's a door here. So this is part of the conservatory too. Yeah. Oh, oh, is yeah. it? Yeah. There's a plant right So here. can we see all of this? No, this is a wall. That's a wall. See, there's a wall there. But that's a door. Yeah. This is a door. So if you see, if you're looking along the lines hmm. of the room, if yep. you see a small, like, gray portion, that's a door. I see it. Yes, yeah, so this is totally closed off. So there's, this is like a right angle, right? And there's just a door here and a door here. Mm. It's very unusual that this, uh, this plant would be still alive after all this time. You think it's a magical tree? It is possible. It's got fruit on it. it looks pretty good. I'm Briggsy, you are not for one second going to tell me to not touch whatever occult board is in the other room, and then you're going to you're going to preach to me about how you're going to eat some horrific fruit. I mean, what's so horrific about it? It looks pleasant compared to everything else in here. You must be kidding. Well, I didn't say I was going to eat it. My point is, is that roll an intelligence save, or intelligence throw for intelligence check. Oh, fifteen. Mm. Okay, Look up. Um, you've heard of bergamot before, and you know that it is used in certain teas, especially in Brie. Um, If you've always wanted to try it, uh, you've heard that the fruit itself is very, very flavorful, and there, being a citrus, you wonder if it is one of the few things you might be able to get a hint of the taste. Look, Mary, I'm not saying I'm gonna eat it, but, but, I don't taste things. My tongue's dead. I mean, I'm basically dead. But those things I've heard are so intense. And if it's in this land from that magical tree, maybe I can taste it. Well, it's your funeral again. Does anything, like, I'll kind of approach the tree. Does anything, just having obviously lived in a forest, does it look off to me? Or, like, if I touch a leaf, does it feel... The tree itself doesn't look off. I'll roll a nature check. Mm. Mm. We have a tree. Uh, 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 terrible. Twist Is it more than twist a ten? It. No. I, I would oh. propose twist it. Let's twist, twist it. I want to know what so the fuck's up with that. Thank you, Chad. Even worse. Oh, what? No. And then I put it down. Yeah. Nothing. I know. Nothing. Yikes. Um. Well, what? Did, what is your actual roll? Uh. Four uh, plus was nature. It was four. So four. Uh, so six. Eight, six. That was oh. before I twisted it. But yeah, but you yeah, can so take, yeah, you can take which one you want. Okay. Um, yeah, looking at it, it looks fresh. Like it looks healthy and happy. You don't see anything off. I objected to touching the spirit board. Seems fine to me. Because it was a medium for communicating with the dead. Uh, this is a a plant like the statue. We we can do what we want here. We own this house. Uh, looking over my shoulder as Lethica kind of talks at me, using my sword to look at the doors that's running me through, I say, uh, again, it's your funeral. I can't stop you. I mean, is anyone else, is anyone else just not even a little bit curious about what those things taste like? No. If we're gonna, if we're gonna live here in between trips out, we might as well know if the food is edible. Do you think they can make some tasty sort of Carbonated soda from it? Some sort of frothy beverage? Okay, that's brilliant. Like they'll probably hire somebody to do just that. Do you think the roots would taste mighty fine? How about a toast? How many fruits are there? Hmm? How many fruits are there on the tree? Four. I will pluck all four. Okay. Who'd like to join me? I'll try one. Well, I mean, it's kind of a waste on yeah, me. It, it comes off easily a little bit of the, um, a little bit of the normal liquid that you'd experience to see pool right around where you popped it off. But it smells very fragrant and and nice, and it feels ripe in your hand. Well, well, I, I guess I suppose Virgil doesn't care for Shad's Brill either, and I still quite enjoy that. So maybe I might enjoy this too. Anybody else? Farron? What's for me? I will decline until we rid the evil that is in this place. 
got an extra. You like to join my orange toast? Oh, uh, you're asking me. Yes, I'm asking you. And I walk over to Ramirez and look at her. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this doesn't help the ha- this doesn't help the people in this house. So, thank you, but no thank you. I will decline. All right, lads. To us, the real witch hunters. The, the midnight witch hunters is what Lord uh, Druskenvold said. That's pretty cool. To the midnight witch hunters. To dinner. Can I just eat the whole thing? What did you say? To dinner. Oh, dinner. <laughs> I'm gonna you my, paste it to jaw. To 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 my jaw and chains. <laughs> and it just, I just dropped the entire fruit into my... You dropped the entire fruit into your mouth. Um, <laughs> your, your neck hole. Uh, I almost called you cremmy. Brazy, yep. you, you you swallow it whole. Uh, you bite into oh, yeah, yeah. it I, I, and, I, I, and I, I, I bite almost it. immediately I it. swallow it, it back. You taste nothing. Oof. The texture is try. not what you expected. But you're grim. You're the one that this affects the most because you're the one with a sense of taste. Sure. And you take a bite into this as you feel parts of your gum your gums rip open as something slices in to the flesh inside of your mouth. The as hell? you pull the bergamot away, the entire inside of this fruit is filled with human teeth. <laughs> Briggsy, as the fruit tumbles through you in pieces, you Falls watch as chest. bits of his open flesh teeth begin to spill out of his inside. And inside of and inside of uh, Jericho, you can hear the clattering of individual teeth as they all hit bottom of his of the inside of his mechanical cage. I knew Virgil liked that a little too much for a fruit. I think I'm bad. So teeth. I think I'm bad. There's teeth in the fruit. The food is not edible. It's not real. It's probably cursed food. I'm probably double cursed now. I would say at this point, Farron, you take a closer look at this plant and you see that the soil that it's growing out of is far darker and far more moist than the soil that is around the rest of the plants, which is dried up and is a little more brown. There is definitely something strange about the soil this plant is growing from. I'll take some in my hand and kind of like put it through my fingers and smell it a bit and see if I can like pick up on anything. You smell decay and rot. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> didn't uh, didn't the parchment from earlier say something about stealing teeth? Yes. And I reread the line about stealing teeth. I don't have any I just wrote down teeth. <laughs> uh, the thing in the walls wants my teeth. Um, is that right? I think that's it what is. I mean. Let me find it, it for was the you. Thing. I had nightmares in the crooked house, grandmother's <clears throat> whispers in darkness. The thing in burns. the walls, period. It wants my teeth, period. Bloody roots, period. Oh, oh. damn. All right, so we got... With the parchment. We got this guy. You got bloody roots. Yo, Grimma, you all right? You feel around in your mouth, and you have to pry out a large molar that had stuck itself into the fleshiness of your gums. As you pull it out, blood begins to drip. You have blood pooling at the sides of your mouth. As you slowly, um, as you um, drink back the blood Uh, that is now spilling out of your gums. Yo, Grimma, I don't mean to be crass. Your shovel. I look to the tree. Dig. <clears throat> Usually it's just for burying, but I think in this instance, I can make an exception. From uh, the smell of the soil, something may already be buried. Oh, God. Oh, I see that. I'll start striking like oh, just towards the like if I, like towards the roots and like you, see you if I can take, like um, you it. take your shovel and you dig it down into the damp earth and as you pull it up and the dirt begins to fall away you <clears> see <throat> that the darkness of the soil is not naturally dark but is blood soaked as it begins to fall away 
from a rotting human skull. It appears to be a woman in agony. Is it a skull or like, the, the, is the face still on it? There, bits and pieces of it that haven't fully deteriorated, but I would say you can't you can't understand why because looking at most of this, there should be no flesh left on it. You poor soul. You you were never properly laid to rest. I'll step forward and look down at this corpse. Um, it's in a semi state of decay. It's, it's bloody. nearly mostly decayed. There are just bits and pieces of leathery fe- flesh still s- still stuck to parts of it. And it's evidently a woman. It is evidently a woman. There's a large crack in the very top of the skull where the roots are poking out of the eyes and out of the m- open mouth, which you will now all notice are devoid of all teeth. That was going to be my As question. the roots snake down around it, you can see the bare stump of the top of her spinal cord, which looks to have been severed. Okay. And the tree itself is growing up out of the top of her skull. Some tragedy happened here. Something happened to this woman. She did not get here by accident. At the very least, it appears as though the note is accurate. That's a good... Can I take a quick... Like once over the corpse and see if it looks like anything like uh, outside of a head. There's no other oh, parts a of a corpse. It's simply just the head. Is there anything like? Well, it looks like it was pierced, or just the teeth are gone. Or? The teeth are gone, and it looks like the um, the spine was severed right beneath the. Um, so it's like right a above skull the shoulders. With a, a bit of spine connected. There's a very <laughs> small amount of spine at the okay. base of the neck. As far as I'm concerned. There is something in the walls. Did we eat her teeth? Is that why she's missing her own teeth? It would seem <laughs> likely. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> I would propose that we, in some cultures, the wholeness of the corpse is meaningful for it to pass on into into the great beyond, I would propose that we return what teeth we can and restore the tool for what what we can. Yes. I agree. She shouldn't be buried here, though. I'll dig outside and perform her rites. Do you think you'll dig deeper here and find the rest of her? I can keep digging. See if there's anything else. Do, do we really think that we need to get all the teeth? Perhaps even ones that are all, all of your them. Grim, you're the one holding the tree with the skull huh? because you dug oh. it out. Uh-huh. So you're the one holding the skull. Okay. No, I'm asking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, the last one again. again. Oh no, he left the room I last. Mean, well. As, what do you think, you said? <laughs> as, as you have this conversation, you turn towards one of the doors. Oh. As your ankle is caught oh, God. by a root slowly creeping up your body. And as all of you turn to look, though Yorgrim is still holding the skull with the tree, the bergamot tree still attached to it, at the very corner of this room is the floating head of a woman that seems vaguely familiar. And from where you imagine a spinal column to be is nothing but a long row of the spine and her nervous system dangling and flaying and moving in the air as she looks at all of you and begins to laugh. <laughs> and we, we all see this? <laughs> Vines begin to creep up around you from the dead foliage in this room. I need you all to make a strength saving. Um, oh, oh, yeah! For the first time in my life, I've been excited for a uh, strength, you say? A strength saving throw. Oh, oh. oh, God. Natural 20. Gotta give it up. Gotta give it up. Oh, I have a plus zero. That's not too bad. <laughs> um, I, uh, oh, God. Oh, well, we are below, of course. The worst uh, on the planet. Oh, phone's dead. No uh, idea what my stats are. Do you need a shimmy shoe? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Chin, and in chin. five minutes, you keep back on. No big deal. Oh, he's stolen mine. You're here, screwed. You can have this one. I saw it. Oh, here. thank you. Uh, uh, here, what I'll, did you roll? Uh, nine. Uh, I don't have, think I'm professional, am I? Yeah, you are. Do you need this? So nine, yeah. 10, right, 11, like, 12. My guess would be, would be at least plus. Did anyone six. roll beneath a 14? Oh, well, allegedly, according anyone to the Anyone who written rolled on beneath a 14 will take six points of bludgeoning oh, damage gosh. as the, as the be vines deal. begin to lash around at you as one of them reaches up, grabs the bergamot plant from your grasp, it swings around the room, the skull flying over your heads as it slowly places it back down in its spot. And as the head sinks beneath the soil, the vines begin to calm and move back down as the face floating, its nervous system completely exposed to you. The skull, the eyes hollow and empty as it looks out at you. It opens it, its mouth as if to make a sound, no teeth within as it slowly fades and disappears from view. This cannot stand. Uh, we this, all saw this, that. Yeah. Yes. This 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 poor woman, she cannot be be left here. Did she look familiar? Depends on uh, what you're asking. Did she look like a woman in the portrait? Yes. Oh, that's the lady of the house. Wait, that's the lady. That's the lady. That's the lady in the house. If I'm putting two and two together, well, how was she? I, at? I would say I'm not going to make you roll for this. I would say you could you could guess from the image of the skull and the nervous system, the head and the nervous system, that the skull you unearthed beneath the tree was in fact Petunias. And they were like de- decapitated roughly at the same spot, like. Presumably. The image, the the face that you saw had far more flesh. It was still uh, decaying. Um, the one with the nervous system. Uh, you, it was enough that you were able to distinguish who it was. The other one had very small bits of leathery flesh still attached to it. Well, do you, do you want? I guess you don't want your teeth back. How was she having a tour? She was having a grand old time. I don't know much about the, the spirit side of things, but it seems she wished to be left where she lies. It's not natural. We, we, we can't be expected to, to make sure that things are okay here and, and for us to live here. And with as her. you say this. Shit. <laughs> the door off to the side slowly opens, the one into the next room. Well, the horror and never you end. hear a soft patter of feet. <laughs> I'm, I pull out my gun and I just shoot, shoot Eldritch Blast through the door. <laughs> or at the door. You shoot, roll a, an attack? Oh my god. Jesus. <laughs> Disadvantage, presumably. Oh dear. Uh, 13. You shoot into the room and you see bits of wallpaper Love and it. wood <clears throat> splinter off. Uh, dust billowing up in the in the darkness of the room ahead of you, but you hear no sounds of pain. You hear no uh, gasps of of shock. Doesn't seem to be <laughs> a thing, but part of the house. Well, I, I, I'm going to return the teeth because that's what what what, uh, what Lethic has said. I'm going to turn around now and please, no one look. Please, no one look while I do this. And I'm going to turn around, and I'm like look over, and make sure that no one's looking. And then I'm going to turn back and retrieve the teeth as as subtly as possible, and pull up my shirt and try to feel around in there. I'll say you're easily collect able to collect all the teeth. There's not much. Do in the there. truffle shuffle until yeah. they all come out. <laughs> Shake, and I'll grab it. And I'll just kind of like like feeding like ducks at the pond, and then just like chuck the, the, the teeth back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Lady. We will find her a better resting place soon, but we must follow these feet sounds, I think. After Uh, you. I would also just return uh, the teeth and any more that are still jammed in my gums um, and just say, Demon Tree, I will be back to bury her properly. You are able to do that. We make our way into the next room. Before you is a ruined kitchen, with broken shards of pottery from storage jars and rusted cutlery strewn about the floor. 
A heavy metal shelf that had once been built into the wall has collapsed, <clears throat> taking huge chunks of plaster with it and splintering a table beneath its weight. A small door at the end of the room is very slightly ajar with a line of pitch blackness beyond. Beside it is a huge brick oven that looks like little more than a fireplace with a sturdy iron door that remains perpetually swung open, tilting in its disrepair. The darkness of the kiln nearly swallows the metal racks inside it, and as you first scan the room, you notice a pop of bright color within. Your eyes adjust and you can clearly see a circular pastry that looks somewhat like a mincemeat pie, but with a layer of pinkish purple frosting on top that betrays what you presume to be an overly saccharine taste and is yet another bit of impossibility in this house. Compared to the rest of the scattered and rotted food stores, it seems to be freshly made. I draw my weapon and I point directly <laughs> at it and I say, have we all learned our lesson now? I think so, yes. How the fuck is this getting here? Do you mean to attack the pastry? <laughs> <laughs> I think she needs to get shit on. <laughs> I can't award this, but take an inspiration. <laughs> no. I mean to stop anyone who believes in any more foolishness. This is not natural. And we mean to be here to expel it. Please. What do you suggest? Well... Do we think that there's some sort of mysterious baker? It's probably... No. <laughs> is there you said no, there's not an that. oven in here? Or like, yeah, the pastry is sitting on the rack on in the, the oven. oven. There's, yeah. a, there's a thing here. Do is we get there, a... Is it like lit and hot? Um, you can feel the warmth coming from it seems to have been lit recently. Nothing else in this room looks like it's been touched, but the pastry itself and the warmth from the oven seems to be fresh. Is there pastry smell? Mm. Yes. Mm. It's a very soft, faint smell. Yes. But it smells... Your stomach crumbles a little bit. Even though you had some food in the carriage with uh, Lord Philip, it wasn't enough. And there is something about this that looks appetizing. So, no, I'm still not beyond communication to answer your question. But if that's not an option, we continue to move on and we ignore this horrific mockery of food. I made you a promise that we would return to the spirit board. But I do not think that we should enjoy this pastry. Well... So the oven is basically like a, a fireplace, like looking thing. It's, and it's like it's like a like a baking like a pizza. Think yeah. about a pizza oven. Well, if if there's a if there's a, a proper chimney, do you think that maybe one of us should take a look? It's still hot to the touch, Jericho. Every horror we've encountered so far has had a line in the mad ramblings of. Gaston Gray. Is there anything after the bloody roots? Gaston writes of his grandma's whispers of a wick or something burning. A, wind a, wind, a windmill. A windmill burning. Bloody uh, roots, eyes in the amber, beware the below, me. I will not leave this place, the buzzing calls remember me. Nothing. That's what's after it wants my teeth. Beforehand, it's nightmares in the crooked house, grandmother's whispers in darkness, a windmill burns, the thing in the walls. Gosh, I wish I didn't tell Virgil to stay by the spirit board. This would be the perfect opportunity to put him to use. So looking at the floor, like, do we see any, like, footprints or anything that would have indicated mm -hmm. someone in here? I would, I would, I won't even make you roll for it. It is very clearly dusty in here you would easily be able to see footfalls or anything. Just the movement that you've had in this room, you can see clearly where each of you has stepped. And? And what? Is it just our footfalls? And is it that is just you? your yeah. footfalls. Okay, that was your question. Yeah. Yes. That's, sorry, I was making sure I understood. Oh. Is anyone gonna eat the pastry? Oh, oh, gosh. I would like to <laughs> cut a steam and slice and then throw it against the wall. Oh. See what, Wait, see if there's it. Okay, okay, I don't do that. <laughs> I see I see you cutting and as you cut into the pie I say be delicate 
Two of the artifacts that we have come across in this house have had something of import inside of it. I need you all to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, oh Jesus. this is bullshit. Sorry. I'd like to smite your brother. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got a 12. Oh, Sweet teeny. I fucking suck. I got a roll. It's so bad. Nine. Just 12. kill me. Oh, I'm down. Did, did, anyone, did anyone roll below 14? I actually <laughs> <you'll> take <laughs> three points oh. of fire damage. As the moment your blade comes in contact oh, with the pastry, no. the entire <laughs> oven erupts in a purple-pink fire, the same color as the frosting on the pastry. And as it does, you begin to hear the echoing sound reverberating through the chimney of what here what sounds to be the the ancient cackle of an old hag. <laughs> I was gonna say it was better than baby bones, and then you did the laugh. <laughs> <laughs> And as the fire begins to shimmer, to, to slowly um, return back into uh, into the oven, a new flame begins to, to erupt. Bright orange, reds, and yellows. As you watch as this fire ignites, and you see very faintly under the door more light and the sounds of popping, fires, 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 Jericho, you get an, an alert call from um, from Virgil that a fire has erupted in the parlor room as all of the fires in this house be- begin to ignite and standing inside the oven is a man in front of you, his skin melting from his body. Oh he God. screams in agony as he's trying to wipe the flames from his from his skin, but instead he's rip, ripping melted flesh as he begins to rip his face off, exposing his skull. He screams and reaches out to you as he says, Parlor, help me! All of the fires roar. What do you do? Virgil, say the, the, the parlor, the, the parlor. We, we gotta go to the parlor. I would draw my sword and raise my There's... shield and follow Jericho's instruction. All right, I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start running back the way we came to get yeah. to the parlor. Yeah. I will break my promise. Ye- I will teach you now. He <laughs> <laughs> fell into an oven full of fire. And I'll just... <laughs> you turn from the man burning alive in this fire as you rush back through the conservatory, now quiet, the vines no longer lashing out at you, and back into the parlor where it feels warm and quiet as once again, Bam! As that loud slamming hits against the wall, and all of you are shaken and rattled, but this time, the spirit board does not clatter. Instead, the planchette slowly rises up off of the board and hovers and moves until it rests on the word, greetings. Oh, shit. Oh my god, that's an actual word! Fuck! <laughs> Yes, greetings is oh. the word brings uh, Derek, me. Good. Derek, give me a, a space alien thing. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, well, he's a man possessed. Well, no. Stay, stay for the great the sound effects. Holy shit! You might want to switch it to the other map just for the sake of yeah, being yeah, yeah. able to really see it. There you go. See, you can really see the blue oh, roses yeah, on the camera. Yeah, the blue is really sharp oh, now. It's crisp. Yeah, it was so misty we, before. So but. We, freaking eyeball. We oh, entered this fire. room. Is the room itself on fire? The room is not on fire. The there is now a roaring, warm fire in the fireplace. Ooh. The moment you entered, that same slam that's been happening on the side of the house happened again, and you were all jostled. Last time, it had thrown the planchette kind of off kilter, and it had landed. This time, the planchette right. floated into the air, slowly moved over, and landed on greetings. It made that UFO sound. It did. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this fire is not the horrible 
which for, had no. purple fire. After that had dissipated was when this strange, the man in the fireplace appeared, asked for your help, and all of the fires, what appear to be in the entire house, have illuminated. And you can still see the faint glow under all of the, sh- the closed doors where the fire is illuminating the rooms. So not like the house is on fire, but like the, the uh, fire fireplaces the, the, the fire are places have erupted. Places that should be on the fire The sconces right now. on the wall, as each of you takes a seat, one sconce illuminates, oh, and then another illuminates, and then another illuminates as you slowly sit around the circular table. Yeah. And the fire looks normal. There's no man burning with There's it. There's no man burning I would it. I would take the seat that I previously took, and I would say, Lethica, now is the time. I agree. Everyone join hands. Okay. Great. What? What do you mean by this? I mean, what are we going to do exactly? And so I will explain a little bit since there are rules to the spirit board oh my in God, this my. session. I don't know if Lethica's communicating all these you, rules. You all let URP experience it. So you are you will have control of it. I will tell you where the planchette moves and how that works. Each of you is allowed to ask the spirit one question. It only knows certain things um, and it will be up to you to figure out what kinds of things to ask it, and then when it's done, you will need to end with goodbye. Is this a modified speak with dead, and how fucked am I? (laughs) (laughs) It's a modified speak with dead in the sense that you are less fucked than you would be if this was speak with dead. (laughs) So, just to clarify, if if this is important, if if, if you can't answer it, it's fine. If we, like, talk amongst ourselves and ask, well, how did this work? Oh! No, and that's why it's it's not as fucked as speak with death. Okay, okay, okay. You can talk amongst yourselves, and then when you want to ask it a question, you'll start with spirit. Mm. And that way, Mm. that will be an indicator that you're asking the spirit and not each other. And Lethica relays that to us. And you I, have to be touching the plan check. So if you we were saying, to touch it, if you right? were saying, should I ask it, spirit, what's going the on? That wouldn't work. Spots, but you all have to touch it and right? say, spirit, blah blah blah. But all six of us have to touch it, right? Yes. I explain this, uh, looking directly at Marius uh, as I do, but speaking to the group as a whole. Um, we will each be able to ask a question. We will be able to address the spirit uh, when we are ready to ask ask a question. Be the, the first person to reach out can be the person who asks, but we all must t- touch the planchette in order to, to convene with the with the dead commune. Who are we speaking to? Do you know yet? Was I, it the man in the fire? I suspect that we are speaking to the man in the fire, and that the name of that man is Eustace, Eustace Lockwood. But I do not know. The first question we ask could be that one, if you would have it. I don't want to take lead on this. I'm not sure of it. This. You got some mighty clammy hands there, partner. Is it only one person that we can speak to now? It's the person who's reached out to us and said this greetings. It is whatever spirits happen to be in the house. It could be one, it could be many. It could be something much worse. Well, M- Mr. On Fire fella said to go to the parlor. Maybe it's Mr. On Fire fella. Probably. Well, also Virgil did too. I look at Virgil. Greeting, spirit. We meet you well. We are ready to commune with you now. Would like the first question. I have only one question, and that is how we can aid these people trapped and punished in this house. Then we must release hands, and you will be the first to place your hand on the planchette. Relay your question, starting by addressing the spirit. Spirit, how can we aid the poor, unfortunate souls of this estate? You feel the planchette vibrate beneath your hands as it slowly begins to move to the letter K. Oh my god, it's my name! <laughs> Are you cast for that? I. <laughs> K-I? Mm-hmm. All right, you guys are moving this, right? L. 
Yes. Oh, no. Yes, my yeah. power and justice. <laughs> We are moves all moving off it. of L and then quickly back to L ah, ah, ah. before moving to H A G Kill Hag. Ah, ah. Someone, someone must ask, ask where or how. I know my mission. I will follow through. Spirit. How can we kill this hag? You wait for a moment, and you finally feel it begin to vibrate and move to I, T, S, B, E, L <laughs> O W oh! oh, I am so below? It's below. It's, it's below. below. Beware the below. There, there, there must be a basement. There, there must be some some lower dwelling. God, wounded. Remove your hands. Join with mine again. We must decide what our remaining questions are, but I agree that our, our next step will likely be to find the way down. Well, there's... I don't mean to be presumptuous, but if, if, if there was that headless lady and the guy burning, and I'll look back, I'll look up at the, the portrait. If them two ch- children are still around here. I'd like to, I'd like to ask if there's any way we can find them and maybe help them. That's a good question. Put your hand down and ask. Uh, uh. But Mr. G- I mean, Spirit, can we help the children in that their portrait? It takes a moment as the clan chat begins to shake, and it moves to the word yes. <gasps> I should have asked how. <laughs> Our cause is noble. That's all we need to know. This is. This is very good news. Uh, perhaps there is good we can do here. Spirit, are they still alive? Panchat begins to shake as it moves to the word no. Retribution and justice is all that lies in our path. We have to lay their souls to rest. Two questions. Is the hag the only threat here? Ask. Spirit. Is the hag the only threat here? The moment you ask, there's no hesitation. If the planchette whips across the board, and then back to the word no. Ah! Ah! <laughs> One left. What do we ask? Let us discuss. Fair, Fairin, it is your choice. You may use your question as you like, but I would put it to the group. Uh, if, if I can throw my hat into the... No, Virgil, stay away from my hat. Uh, <laughs> if I can throw my hat into the... Virgil, into the ring. <laughs> I would like to know if the spirit knows where the, them children are. So we can help them. It is a difficult call. Where are the children versus... How do we find out what other threats there are? Risk or reward? 
We could ask, where are the children? Or we could ask, how do we help them? Threats aside, we know what we must do. One of the tenants is always aid, and I intend to regardless of threats. Fair like your question, Jericho, I think that's a good one. The choice is yours. Do we find the threat or do we find the children? I don't know where. I think the threat. Put your hand on the planchet. Let us see what other evil remains in this house. Am I asking? Where is it? How do we cleanse this place of evil? All evil. What if how we do we cleanse this place of all evil? What? What if the answer's the same as killing the hag? I'm afraid I was going to I'm going to my hand until we figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we know our mission. When you asked her for it, did you ask how we killed the hag? I know how we killed the hag. And how was it? With my holy blade and by Lathander's word. Well, I know it must be done and I will not leave this house until it is done. Uh, the, 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 the how is not the question. Marius, you're right. If there's one thing that Virgil's good at, you'll see Virgil seems to be very pleased with himself. It's it's killing hags. That's good to know. I've killed many a dark beast. Cutting off the head usually seems to do the trick. Do we wish to know about any other spirits in here? We know that the, the family is around, but any others? That, I, uh, I personally Gaston. believe putting an end to this hag and alleviate the suffering. What if we just ask the spirit its name? Do we, do we know? We do not. It is, it is. It has been a very helpful spirit. We are blessed. Perhaps we may need to call on him again. It's a sign of good faith. It's a nice gesture. Right. Spirit, what is your name? It takes a moment as the planchette begins to vibrate beneath your hands. As it moves to P. Zither. E. T. R. I. N. <laughs> I. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta get the fuck out of here. I have to go. I can't be here anymore. I have to leave. I have to go. I have to leave. This isn't okay. What is from Patrini? Evangelion Chubb. Okay. Oh I have to God. leave. I can't be. I can't be here anymore. <gasps> Patrini. That's a mighty fine name. I'll write you a song for being such a helpful ghost. The oh fire in the fireplace begins to grow larger as all of a sudden it blasts up into the chimney. The spirit board at your hands begins so to shake I'm, and quiver I'm, as I'm the sorry. planchette begins to move on its own. <laughs> F. Uh -oh. oh, fuck. I'm going to make you move it. F. I. Oh, God. Oh. N. The hands are here. D. Fine. K. I. Um. D. Fine kid. S. Fine kids. M. Fine kids. Y. I. B. O. Boy. O. K. Fine kids, my book. U. P. S. T. A. I. R. S. It lands on the final word before shooting to the word fa farewell. As all of the light in this house is extinguished, you find yourselves in absolute pitch black darkness. It is past midnight in this land of night. And that is where we were. Oh my god! Oh!
Fine kids, my book upstairs. upstairs. And then we kill the fucking hand in the basement! <laughs> so I started blasting. <laughs> oh, so done. anyway, I started blasting. <laughs> We're not done. Uh, what's I next? Well, okay, so I'm here's here's how this is gonna work, folks. So normally, after every stream session that we would do, we would do adventures and chill, but for a limited time only, this subscriber only perk will be available to everyone. And hopefully, this will convince you to maybe, you know, so, support us month in and month out. Or and don't. Buy something. Or don't, you know, no big deal. But what we do in Adventures and Chill is we talk about our favorite moments from the stream. Mm -hmm. We talk about mm -hmm. your favorite moment from the stream. Yep. We address all of your comments, sometimes, and questions. And, questions. Questions. and sometimes the DM will pull back the veil just ever so slightly. So, normally this would be subscriber only. Today it's for everyone. As a little bit of a little teaser. Yes. 